Thank you so much. I was able to catch up with Wisconsin Badger head coach Kelly Sheffield before the match. And he said, you know what? The biggest challenge they might face tonight is just Florida's athleticism. He said, my gosh, we're watching film and they're making plays that you just can't believe. He said, I'd hate to see what their highlight video for the season looks like because it would be intimidating. He said, they play out of their mind sometimes. So they just have to stay the course. He said, we know that they're going to make runs and we will have to weather some storms. But he said, really, we don't want to worry about too much tonight. We want to enjoy the celebration that we got to this end and that we are playing in a big arena for a national championship. Thank you, Holly. A quick look at Kelly Sheffield. What a job he's done with this Wisconsin program now in his eighth year underway. And as the higher seed, Wisconsin will be in their home white uniforms. That's going to be a three meter li line violation by Thayer Hall. The opening point here, best three out of five sets. Well, you're going to see a lot of back row attack on the side of Florida. So keep an eye on that between Hall and Caesar for Florida. Izzy Ashburn, defensive specialist, 5'11", sophomore out of Dayton, Minnesota. On to serve and misses that one just long. Sixth meeting all time, Florida a perfect 5-0. The last meeting, not that long ago, Florida upset Wisconsin in the 2015 regional semifinals. And on the shank pass there, nice start for Florida from the service line. Their outstanding freshman libero, Ellie McKissick, wearing number 23, 5'7", freshman out of Windermere. <laughs> Needless to say, Salima serving and the level and quality thereof may well decide who advances in this regional final. Well, absolutely. Both teams understand how much pressure they need to put on one another from the service line because of the firepower they both have on each side of the net. So it's going to be critical. You're going to see some missed serves, I think, because of how much pressure they want to put on one another tonight. Holly Carlton, six foot seven, redshirt senior out of Sterling, Virginia, missed that one on the wrist away, just cross court. And one of the best Libros in the nation, according to her coach, Kelly Sheffield. This is Lauren Barnes, a transfer from Minnesota. Boy, that's a pretty nice play by Tierra Caesar. It was pretty awkward, but Caesar comes up with a saving block. That's a really nice play, and that and that's the thing about Caesar. She has such great body awareness. She gets up over the net and can follow that ball and track the ball, not net on a play like that. Big play. Play is still alive. You can play the ball below the waist. We've seen it previously in the tournament. A nice rule change from some years ago. I wasn't and even Florida. sure if I, I, I was seeing the right thing. Did she kick that ball? What just she happened? did. She did. Kicked it legally. Carlton, tough server coming from that angle at six foot seven. Perfect reception. First look at Recky is dug by Hall. And away from Barnes and a break there for Florida. Well, you're going to watch Florida just really try to move the ball around and see how, how much they can utilize the net. They understand the size of the block on the other side of the net and, and how they can block scheme. Wisconsin's a very good blocking team, so Florida's going to have to do a lot with their offense. On the overpass to the back row once again, Thayer Hall going off speed. But that rejected by Dana Recchi, six foot eight, out of the middle for Wisconsin. Well, Dana Ruckies just has such great vision and tracks the setter well, and she, her foot speed laterally is something that I wanted people to keep an eye on. She's big, yes, she moves well, but she moves really, really well for anyone for any size. Giorgia Civetta, five foot six senior out of Milan, Italy, on the serve, has overcome three ACL injuries in order to get deep into this NCAA tournament, originally transferred in from Wichita State. Boy, a tough run from Ansare, who was really good yesterday against Ohio State. Three sets to one win for Florida. And quickly down the line, there's some of that explosive balance for Wisconsin. Well, and Chivita putting that pressure on the, on the passers right now and creating that free ball coming over the net. You're going to leave Grace Loberg one-on-one, -on -one and she's going to be able to score every time. 
Loberg, 2.9 kills. You saw the support that is given to Retke along with Sidney Hilly. Hits 302. First team, all Big Ten, 6'3 senior out of. Some early nerves. We've had a couple of service errors as we'll take a look at T.R. Caesar for the first time. Seventeen kills on 46 swings yesterday against Ohio State. Quick turnaround. Recky on the slide. Monterey is there, but uh, can't be tracked down. That starts with a nice pickup by Deanna Kraft in the back row. Has done a nice job for Wisconsin coming in, controlling the ball passing-wise and defensively. Putting that ball right on the money for Sydney Hilly to set Dana Recky. Deanna Kraft, her role is really expanded and it's really helped Molly Haggerty. It definitely has freed her up a little bit, allowed her to just hit and do what she, she does right now and does well. Wow. What a dig by Barnes and by Caesar, but that is over and out of bounds. But you got to look at Lauren Barnes, the 5'6 senior out of Naperville, Illinois, wearing number one. Just a magnificent defensive play. I tell you, she has embraced this role and really has done such a fantastic job for Wisconsin, gotten better and better as the season has gone on. And I tell you what, it's plays like that that's huge for Wisconsin right now. Javita with the dig. Wisconsin on a 5-1 run. Good stab by Haggerty. Oh, good block. That's a big block by the transfer out of the University of California. Lauren Forte wearing number 24 in white out of Tempe, Arizona. I tell you, this is a nice move. And see how she fills this space and keeps going. She holds her position, turns her hands back into the court. We saw that a little bit against St. Arecki versus BYU. The middles are just showing up a little bit late, push, pressing their hands back into the middle of the court. Haggerty again continues her run in this NCAA tournament. 14 of 28 against BYU with no air. She gets her first kill so far on the evening in Omaha. And I really like the speed that they're running with Haggerty right now. When that ball is perfect, it's a perfect pass, and they're running it nice in system rhythm for her and it's really difficult for the block to close and get all the way out there. And she's getting the ball from Sydney Hilly, the six foot senior out of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. The setter of the year in the Big Ten Conference. Nice dig in the cross court. And Thayer Hall is able to thump that through and around the block that time of Hilly along with Retke. Thayer Hall doing a nice job already for, for the Gators. You're going to see them, like I talked about, moving the ball around a little bit. Just remember, keep in mind, the Gators don't run a slide in their offense. So you're going to see a lot of D balls with Caesar. So you'll see something from both pins. That's how they make up that difference on the right side of the court. Out of Windermere, Florida, here's Marley Monsere, the six foot junior who had eight kills yesterday and five block assists. That was a really productive performance against Ohio State. Well, I tell you, she's just such a fun set to watch and watch her develop over the years. It was really smart, saw the block, saw the defense, and was extremely effective last night. Already a couple of service errors for both teams, maybe showing some nerves. Hall going off speed, nice choice. Good decision by Thayer Hall, number 20 in orange for Florida. Well, really nice decision when that ball's falling inside. You don't want to take a big blast and hit right into this huge block. She takes a little bit off of it, a beautiful roll shot to the middle of the court. Love that touch by Thayer Hall. Yeah, that is really perfect touch and another service error. We talked about the schedule and the quick turnaround for Florida having played Ohio State just yesterday, but not the same for Wisconsin. They played BYU on Saturday. How might that impact either team's preparation and does it give Wisconsin an advantage? Well, I tell you what, it's always nice to have more rest and more prep time. So for sure, I mean, you talk to anybody, they would say, yes, we'd love some time. We like to have more time to prepare, but physically it's huge. But for Florida, let me tell you what, these guys are physical. They are fantastic volleyball players and athletes, and they, they can come back. I have no doubt about it. You see it right there with how they're playing. Long rally, Caesar missing that ball just out of bounds.
Here is Haggerty, who will serve, but then give way in the backcourt to Deanna Kraft. Caesar, tough swing against this block going off speed. Carlton into the block and is stuffed by Wisconsin. Well, Danielle Hart and Grace Lover getting all the way out there, closing that block, and Hart doing a nice job taking that seam away. It's a very solid number one seed, Wisconsin, on top of Florida by four in the first. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals beginning Thursday, April 22nd at 7 Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Back with three-time All-American Salima Rockwell in Austin, Texas. I'm Paul Sunderland. Big run here right now for Wisconsin. The number one ranked team in the nation virtually all season. And the overall number one seed. That kill by Carlton Salima puts an end to a 10-5 run. What was Wisconsin doing or what was Florida struggling with? Well, I think they were just struggling to put the ball away. And, and Wisconsin doing a nice job with the block and just getting in front of them. And that's what we saw against BYU. Getting some great block touches, controlling the ball a little bit. And that's what Florida's going to have to work their way around it and eliminate some of the unforced errors service and at the net that ball hit out of bounds by another a large group of top freshmen in the country Devin Robinson 6'2 freshman out of uh, Iowa just a tremendous shot down the line but just a little bit wide unbelievable swing <laughs> Take, yeah it takes your breath away her ability back again and that ball off the block and out of bounds and I love the repeat. You know, you go back to someone, they take a healthy swing, just miss. You know they want it. You know they want the ball again. And Hilly going right back to Robinson. Robinson hitting 442 in the Big Ten. There was no non-conference. All of those matches are in the Big Ten, which is far and away the best conference in the country. Chance here for Wisconsin. Hilly with the first contact. Oh, good block. Good response once again by Forte with some help on the outside. I tell you, that is a monster block out there. But Forte does such a nice job getting from pin to pin, especially when that ball's off the net. Look at this perfectly timed, huge block on the right side with Carlton and Forte. Beautifully executed job by Florida. Florida. Shank pass, opportunity for Florida. Trailing by only two. And now trailing by three. Saving block right back at you by Recky with some help from Robinson. Well, what I like about the block is how they line up. That ball's a little bit inside. They do a nice job. Give credit to Robinson lining up perfectly and allowing Dana Recky to close right to her for that stuff block. Robinson, 11 of 18 against BYU, named to the first team all Big Ten again as a freshman. There are so many wonderful young players in college volleyball this year. I have no idea who's going to be the national freshman of the year. I don't this either. by Florida. <laughs> Good dig by Hall. And Recky off the top of the block and down. Salima, when you watch Dana Recky against BYU, and she really struggled. Six of 21 with four errors hit under 100. What did you see there? And it should it be a concern to Wisconsin and Wisconsin followers? You know, I, I, what I saw was... What Sydney Hilly has done really all year, flinging that ball back there to her and taking some chances, which is nice and what you'd like to see. But BYU did a really nice job filling in the seams, blocking the cross court, because a lot of those balls that are far were falling inside a little bit and she was forced to hit cross court. And that's where BYU got her. When the ball was high all the way to the pin, she started having more success. Good block touch by Florida and a nice play outside to Caesar. Number three in the orange jersey, but Tiara Caesar really struggling to start this. You can see the frustration on her face, Salima. She's 0 yeah, for absolutely. 7. Yeah, and that's tough. I mean, she had a big night last night and she wants to have that same kind of success. But we talk about these, these matches, getting to the semifinal is a tough match. It's a big deal. Everybody knows you try not to think about it, but the magnitude of it, it is big. Bayer Hall looking for the deep cross court corner. So back to back hitting errors off both wings. The star outside hitters, and they are indeed that. Tiara Caesar and Thayer Hall and Mary Wise 
now in her 30th year, 30 con 30th consecutive NCAA tournament call and a timeout. They had gotten back within two, but now gave up uh, in combination with that an 8-3 run. So Florida forced to call the timeout, trailing Wisconsin 18 to 12. Mary Wise, uh, what an incredible career at Florida. On the list of the winningest coaches of all time, she's fifth overall with 979 overall wins now. That puts her fifth. Russ Rose, your former mentor, is on top with 1309, and also Mary Wise, in terms of winning percentage, is won at a clip of 845. Uh, just a tremendous performance by Coach Wise looking to get back into the NCAA National Semifinals once again. Well, and this has been something that's been consistent with Mary Wise over the years, how she's gotten her teams prepared in conference, winning conference championships, and then prepared for the postseason. Someone that everyone knows is always in the conversation, always in the mix. Mary Wise been doing such a phenomenal job with that Florida program. All right, Salima, now you be Coach Wise. What's she telling her team right now, not only to get back into this set, but really smooth things out? Well, I tell you, I think they're pressing a little bit too hard right now, uh, trying to go after some big swings, big rips. Maybe just hit the edges of the block, look for areas of the court that are open and, and available, but just kind of settle in and steady down. We, uh, you could see it, like you said, on Tiara Caesar's face. Hey, guys, it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. Let's pass the ball and do what we normally do, not try to do more than what we normally do. Florida right now hitting negative against Wisconsin. Seven kills, eight errors on 30 swings. They hit over 300 in the opening round against Moorhead State, and yesterday hit 236 against the Buckeyes. Wisconsin, however, offers up a different kettle of fish. Caesar still looking for her first kill. Nice play by Forte. And they're going to get that in the middle from Forte. If they can control the ball and handle it, feed her the ball a little bit. She can score because she can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Wisconsin team, hitting high enough, has the ability to hit hard enough, hard enough over top and around the block. So if the outsides aren't getting it done right now, if they can fire it in there, that's going to help them tremendously. A serve, Tierra Caesar. You talked about it yesterday. Did a wonderful job in reception and defense, and now getting some momentum going for Florida at the service line. Back within four. There's time. Suleiman, you made a great point. Forte is leading Florida in kills, four out of seven, and the outsides really haven't gotten going at all. Another good serve, and the tap down. Beautiful serving by Caesar. But it's this line the line ball that's it's tough to handle and Gianna Kraft is in there hanging out there down the line She's driving this ball right at her getting it to drop a little bit bottom drops out of it a little bit as well Good pass by Chivita in the clutch and that leads to a kill on the outside let's go down courtside to holly Rowe for more on the early at least hitting struggles for florida well that's right i think people really underestimate sometimes when they get into a match with wisconsin just how huge they are at the net like six eight dana retke six four across the front with hart and Loberg, they have really got this big, massive physical block and just kind of learning to work their way around it, find the seams. I saw uh, Tara Caesar go high off the hands on her last attempt, just figuring out how to get through and around this big Wisconsin block does take some time the first time you play this. Well, Holly, thank you so much for that. You're absolutely right about that size of the Wisconsin block. You just don't see that every day when you're playing volleyball. And, and when you get against it, you have to figure out, wow, there's a, some hands in front of me, but these are big hands in front of me. Can I go high? Can I go deep? Tough serve. Lauren Dooley out of the middle wearing number 99. Should have been able to put that ball to the floor. Nice first contact by Chivita. Left side to Haggerty off the edge of the block. Big time rally by both teams playing some excellent defense, but that's what Molly Haggerty has done so well. Just really expanded her ga game and knows when a block's in front of her that she can't hit that straight down. Gonna tool off the edge, take some big cuts off the edges of the block. 
Go back to Paige Hammonds, the sub who had played an awful lot for Florida. Come in. She did her job. Lauren Dooley's got to throw that ball straight to the floor. That was a big opportunity missed as Florida was getting back in this opening set. Hall, and this is that wildly out of bounds. Defensive specialist Ashburn on to serve again. The lead now is five once again. Good read out of the middle. What a good reaction by the high-flying Montserrat. Well, it's just tracking that ball and being super athletic at the net. That's a fantastic play by Montserrat on an overpass. You see Hart is there, ready to crush that ball, and she does a nice job timing it, getting those hands pressed over the net. Remember what Mary Wise told us earlier in the week when we had a chance to speak with her about most improved player in her gym is Marley Montserrat. Well, and she's doing it. She's done it last night. She's just playing at such a high level, running the offense so effectively as well. Another chance for Florida to Caesar, looking for a first kill, not yet. Chavita has been good in the backcourt so far for Wisconsin. Off speed for Haggerty. She's been so good, and, and Paul, that's that's an excellent point. What you're seeing right now, those balls that Caesar might normally put down or Hall might normally score on are not going down right now against Wisconsin. We all know about the firepower of Wisconsin, but it's a defense right now that's really stepping up and controlling this Florida offense. Right now, Caesar and Hall are combined two for 18. And a kill off the left side. Maybe that will open things up a little bit. One-on-one -on -one nice delivery from Montserrat. Well, I tell you, in this Florida team, when they can handle the ball and that ball's perfect right on the money, man, it's, it's difficult to defend. But when they're off the net a little bit right now against Wisconsin, that's where they're having some trouble. You know, if I'm Florida, I, I think we're down to the top team in the country, 22 to 18. And we have not played well at all. I think they can take some positives out of this. They really Absolutely. can. Their outside hitters are not doing anything right now. And that's going to be four contacts. The combination not there. Looking for Danielle Hart, the six foot four redshirt junior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. When you look at this rotation, this is where they use Devin Robinson in different ways. She hits a one or a two in the middle of the court. And keep an eye on the opposite Devin Robinson, who used to be in middle. They like moving around and using her in that way as well. Look at, look at that pass by Barnes. Free ball coming to Florida. A chance to get within two. Caesar off the edge. What a play by Caesar! I tell you what, she's getting fired up, and she wants it. You can see it on her face right now, but look how this ball is delivered all the way out to the pin. She catches just that right hand of Devin Robinson, tooling it out of ball intentionally. 3 nothing run by Florida. Wisconsin needs a timeout, and they'll take it. No question about that. This is a really nice run, because when you look at the numbers, you know, Wisconsin's not lighting it up offensively. They did not necessarily, except for Haggerty and with some help from Loberg and others against uh, BYU, a match they won three sets to none. But uh, Florida, I think, has got to be feeling pretty good about themselves, because eventually Caesar will get going, and so will Thayer Hall. Absolutely, and you add those two into the mix right now. I mean, just a, a couple more kills by each of them, and, and they're right in this and, and completely in this match. Well, they are right now, but they can absolutely win this set. So I think they're having that conversation. They've been a little bit smarter with, with their swings, more patient with what they're doing right now, and getting Wisconsin uh, a little bit more off balance. Florida back within two, and want to remind you on Tuesday, catch an MLB matchup as the Mets take on the Cubs, the first of a three-game series at Wrigley Field. It begins at 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Everybody's pretty excited out where I am in Los Angeles. The Dodgers off to a pretty good start. Took care of the Padres over the weekend. Wisconsin has won 45 of 48 sets on the season. This season has been very interesting. We had a very long and pleasant conversation with Kelly Sheffield earlier today. All the coaches so generous with their time, long range via Zoom. And he reminded us that his team 
has played before the tournament started. So then they have played a grand total of five matches since February 21st because of COVID, which the Big Ten was hit really hard. They played one match against Minnesota. The other was canceled. The two matches against Nebraska were canceled, and the two matches against Penn State were canceled. That's been so Florida, difficult. a chance to get within one, and they do. Yeah. Holly Carlton with a rip into the cross court. You know, and that's what Kelly Sheffield said. Hey, she's the wild card. If they can get her going, she's very difficult to defend. She goes hard. She works hard in transition, gets off the net, and that left arm is hard to read at times as well. Short serve quickly out of the middle and a rip once again by the very versatile Devin Robinson. That's what they like to do in that rotation. We talked about that a little bit. Want to get her the ball because she can see she hits so well in front of the setter and gets on the ball quickly, but of course can can hit on the right side as well. That's where she's playing, but that's a nice luxury to have her be able to hit a, a variety of sets. Coming right side to Robinson over the top. Nice dig by Hall. Oh, good block. That seems to me where it started it. Florida started getting some things done, not only with stuffs, but with some good block touches. When you see them move and shift, as soon as that ball is passed to the right side of the court, they know where it's going. Dooley shuffles over there. They are completely surrounding the ball, and there's zero chance that Loper can hit this ball around that block. Big stuff blocked by number 99, Lauren Dooley, six foot six out of Plano, Texas. And Florida within one, no touch, and we're tied. Just a remarkable turnaround in this opening set. And we'll see Wisconsin change this pattern a little bit here, put Robinson on the right and try to mix things up with their rotation and how they're in service. -y. Another block, wow. Lauren Forte has been the best Gator on a 7-1 run. And who would have thought this? Forte and the Gators now, Salima, with a set point and the second timeout taken by Wisconsin. I, t I tell you, at this point in the, se in the season, during the tournament, I shouldn't be surprised at anything, but I tell you what, this is an unbelievable run by Florida right now. But look at Forte and that timing, getting up and over the net. Huge play for Florida right now at a crucial time in the set. Let's give Florida a lot of credit. One for hanging in when they were really struggling. They were trailing by as many as six, but they've been doing it at the defensive end. Wisconsin, as of today, is the number two offensive team in the country behind only Kentucky hitting at a 345 clip. And after that stuff, they're at 088. What a wonderful defensive response and effort by the Florida Gators. Well, and I tell you what, this is what I was so impressed with with them yesterday is how they were staying patient, not getting rattled and not letting things just run away from them. You could, you absolutely could in those situations, but they have a pretty mature team that's poised and, and, and really methodical with what they're doing. It's super impressive to watch them respond and come back in these situations. And speaking of comebacks, remember what they did to Ohio State? They fought off four set points in the second came back scored six straight points to win it 26 24 and mary wise told us afterwards that's what turned around the whole match they eventually won it in four forte in the middle of your screen number 24 in orange has been absolutely superb a block four kills set point for florida Robinson is blocked. What a cover that time by Hilly. Caesar, been struggling, goes off speed. Dug again by Hilly. Well, that was an unlucky deflection. Really, really misfortunate, unlucky deflection. Wisconsin was on the ground and somehow Salima made a play out of that. Unbelievable. Nice play. You see how happy Danielle Hart is. She knows it. Everybody knows it. 
big play right now for Wisconsin. Wow, that was really, really lucky, if you will, for Wisconsin. Barnes back to serve. Tied at 24. Caesar still really struggling. And Robinson threw the block and down, and just like that, back-to-back -back points, and Wisconsin will have a set point. And I like how Wisconsin is playing defense and reading the hitters really well in the right spots. Barnes has 11 aces so far on the year, wearing number one in the Libero jersey. One of the best in the country at her position. Caesar tentative, going off speed, but a good shot. Florida will get a free ball. Forte again with her fifth kill. Absolutely, ride the hot hand. You have the ability to do it. Get her the ball. She doesn't care who's in front of her right now. There is Carlton, pretty dangerous server for Florida. Caesar, deep swing, covers. Clutch swing once again on the outside in transition by number 21, Grace Lober. I tell you what a set by Sydney Hilly. This is a ball that was tight to the net and could have gone awry, but she does such a nice job clearing the net there, setting that ball beautifully out to Grace Loberg for the kill. And that Florida block wasn't able to close in time. That was a wonderful shot of one of the best setters in college volleyball. No question about it. Setter of the year in the Big Ten. Set point number two for Wisconsin. And finally, Tiara Caesar. Sometimes if you just close your eyes, Salima, good things happen. Boy, did That's Florida exactly, need that. That's exactly what it looked like. I don't think, you know, they didn't even know where the ball was going. Caesar's been good in the defensive phase and at the serving line. Very easy serve. Recky hammers that on the slide. Tell you what, that perfect pass and Dana Recky, she knows she knows the importance of this. I mean, she she starts, I'm gonna say it, she starts flaring those nostrils when she gets a kill and she's serious <laughs> about what she's doing. I mean, watch out. But look at Barnes handling this ball and a beautiful set by Sydney Hilly. Recky's lateral movement for a woman that stands six foot eight. Out of bounds, just out of bounds, well left. She is the most mobile six foot eight player I've ever seen. There have been a lot of women of her stature playing the game, not so many collegiately, but around the world, as you well know, Salima. But have you ever seen anybody at that size playing in the middle? They're usually on the outside. They're usually on the outside, you're right. But no, and, and that's her foot speed that, that allows her to do that. She's so good in the middle of the court. Good serve by Hammonds. Perfect set, haul into the cross court, dug by Barnes. Look at Caesar, beautiful overhand dig. And a big swing, Thayer Hall, number 20 in orange. And I tell you, talk about that dig from Caesar and everything she's doing. If she's not getting it done at the net right now, and she's working on getting her kills, she is playing phenomenal defense. Let Thayer Hall go ahead, go up and get it and finish the play for you. Set point number two for the Gators. Do they mounted a huge comeback? Their Washington Huskies impersonation. Retke again, slicing off the angle even further. I'll tell you what, that's a sharp, sharp swing. That's hard to defend. Blocks there, they know where it's going. She still cuts that ball inside the block. See the black tape on her right hand, been playing with a fractured finger on her attacking and serving hand most of the season. Hall misses that out of bounds. Well left by Chivita. Tell you, you gotta like that swing. That's a big swing. She's going for the sideline there. It's just a little bit of a miss. It's a tough time to do it, but I, I like how Hall's playing the game right now. Fourth set point for Recky in Wisconsin. Tough swing out of system from well off the net. Chivita standing in. Haggerty for the win. And and has it inside the block. 
You've talked about Chavita and said her name over and over and over again, and she has kept the Badgers in it, kept them alive. He well, it looked like it was all the number one seeded Wisconsin Badgers early, but Tiara Caesar and Lauren Forte got Florida right back in it. Took overtime. Wisconsin takes it 30 to 28. The wait is over, and it's time to decide a champion. Number two, Catherine Plummer. He has been torching the opponent. Stanford continues to roll. Look at Plummer. Are you kidding me? And here comes Wisconsin. Madeline Gage just having a phenomenal tournament. Must-win situation for Wisconsin, obviously. What a play. That's what this team has been all about. For the championship, Stanford now stands head and shoulders above the rest. Well, that was back in 2019, and Kelly Sheffield is trying to take his number one ranked and number one seeded Badgers to the NCAA semifinals for the fourth or fifth, excuse me, for the fourth time. And last year, they lost to Stanford three sets to none. And you heard the name Catherine Plummer, who's now playing professionally in Japan. She went for 22 kills on 37 swings. 15 and 0, seventh Big Ten title. Won 46 out of 49 sets, no five set matches. And uh, Kelly Sheffield, like you and I, Salima, during the break, we were looking at the numbers going, wait a minute, what really happened there? Because it, it was looking like it was going to be a very comfortable first set win for uh, Wisconsin, but uh, Florida had certainly something to say about it. Tell us about that pad and what Kelly Sheffield would be looking at. Well, he's looking at all the stats that they, they give you everything that you need as far as the normal box score stats or anything rotationally. So he's, he's trying to trying to get a handle on everything they're doing, what's working in each rotation, where you can serve, what they're hitting off of certain passers. Uh, there's so much information that's available. Sometimes it's a little bit of an overload and, and it's, it can be too much, but really you can squeeze points just saying, hey, we know exactly what's gonna happen right here in this rotation at this time. And that's where you can sco score a point just knowing what you've got. Ollie Carlton starts things off once again. Florida could certainly use a better start. Caesar came on towards the end of that opening set, which was won in overtime by Wisconsin, 30 to 28. But you look at Hall and Caesar. They were combined six of 32, and Florida was right in that opening set. Obviously, it went into overtime. Here's McKissick again. Let's go down courtside once again to Holly Rowe. Well, are of we course, really? Holly, you're in, you're in touch with the technology, so this is the right place to go. I, I was just going to say, are we really not going to talk about the fancy stand? <laughs> I mean, Jared Elliott told us he has an 86-page scouting report. Kevin Hambly would always have the iPad in his hand, but I think this is next level. Kelly Sheffield and his group, the stand where they can just turn it to him at a moment's notice, that's next level. That, you're absolutely right, Holly. That I, I'm going to have to get one of those in my home office. I've got everything else, trust me. Caesar finally going hard high hands. That's good for Florida. And off to a 3-1 start. Well, they definitely look a little bit more comfortable right now, understanding that that, that first set was right within their grasp. And they, they're coming off of that same kind of energy. And you can carry that momentum into the next sets. And that's what, to, that's what can win you matches. McKissick, who's gotten Florida off to a pretty good start, doing an outstanding job at the Libro position, filling big shoes left by Ali Gregory, outstanding Libro, which preceded her, who preceded her with the Florida Gators. Florida 21 and 3 overall. Kentucky and Purdue coming up later. Kentucky, the winner once again of the SEC for the fourth year in a row. Look at that first contact right on target and opens things up for Retke. Well, I tell you, look at that transition move as well. Gets all the way out there on the block. A great block touch on Carlton and then transitions to the slide. That's the one thing they that Kelly Shefford said they've been working on is their block touches. And that's what impressed me so much about their match against BYU. So many controlled touches. And Dana Retke is always a big part of that. Tough serve, and what a smart shot cross body out of the back row by Hall, number 20. 
They're going to continue to use Hall wherever she is, get her going as much as they possibly can, and they're going to move that ball to the right side of the court to Carlton and get Hall going as well. Recky misses that ball out of bounds, looking for a touch. We might have our first challenge. Players are headed to the sideline, so we no, we're not going to have a challenge. Dana Recky is just getting ready to get at it once again. Three challenges per team. If we go a fifth set, each team gets an additional challenge as that ball drifts just long. We've had some pretty important challenges so far already today. You remember one early between Washington and Pittsburgh late in that match? Unbelievable. So, and, and we saw some yesterday as well. And even, and even before that, watching ugh, just end of sets, challenges, oh, some tight ones. Loberg on to serve, hit 302 on the year. This is an, a, really a powerful offensive unit. Jara Caesar is starting to find some rhythm. As an outside hitter, you played setter, but if you had a hitter that was really struggling, what would you say to them? What would you try to, because they can't win this match without her being productive. Right. I mean, you got to get in her ear a little bit. You have to know your hitters, though. What do they respond to? Do they respond to you firing them up a little bit or just keeping them calm? And everyone responds just a little bit differently. And sometimes you move them around. Hey, I'm going to give you a different look. Let's run it inside a little bit, just create some space. And, and it just really depends on the, on the hitter. Great decision by Tiara Caesar, who really struggled in the opening set, but has been almost perfect here in the second. I tell you, that was a beautiful shot out of the back row. I and mean, she's working hard back there to get in position. Look at Montserrat, throw that ball in there, keep the team in system way off the net. And a beautifully placed ball by Caesar at the end. Nice start offensively here for the Gators. Six of nine. And the run continues, first by McKissick and now by Caesar. So they made a remarkable comeback in the opening set. They were struggling, not playing well, but in the block and defensive phase, they put some pressure on Wisconsin, got right back in at 5-1 run for Florida. Off speed by Haggerty. She just has all the tools as an outside hitter. She does. She sees the court so well, knows the game plan as well. Where are they lined up defensively? Where can you tip this ball right over the top of the block? When the defense is deep down the line, that's tough for the off blocker to play running across the court. Just a little quick house cleaning. The CHI Health Center. Now we've moved into the big arena for all of the regional finals today. And of course, it will be the site of the national semifinals on Thursday and the championship on Saturday. Tough serve. On the slide, look at this block. Forte, what has she given to Florida, number 24 in orange? I'll tell you what, watch on the perfect pass. They know where it's going. She's a little bit late, and Hall is there. But I tell you what, Forte making some big moves, getting all the way out there, helping Hall with this stuff block. Yeah, give Thayer Hall all the credit. Hall got all the contact, but Forte got there to close. Nicely done. Hammonds again on the floor to serve and misses that one out of bounds. So other than a couple or maybe too many service errors for Florida, they look like a really, really confident team right now in the second set. Big Ten setter of the year, back-to-back -back years, first team All-American. Caesar, and that off of Hilly. Wow. Tiara Caesar has complete what, what a credit to her to just forget what happened in the first set. It's unbelievable. And, and I tell you what, you got to watch her work so hard. The pass is coming and then look at her move from the left side of the court all the way over to the right. They do this not just in service, but in transition as well. It's so impressive. The movement on the back court. Quickly to the floor once again by Devin Robinson. What an advantage does it give Wisconsin and Kelly Sheffield to have a player like Robinson who has experience in the middle and now playing on the right. Can he move her around offensively? Well, he absolutely can. I mean, he does it in on almost every rotation. They like to either run her in front. They start with her doing that, and then they switch to her going on the right side, insert, in serve, receive. But here you have her on the right. That's one thing that he said that she struggles with a little bit is kind of those out-of-system balls. But I tell you what, so many options with Devin Robinson. 
And for more on this outstanding freshman, let's go back down to Holly. Well, guys, I met Devin Robinson when she was about 15 years old because her father, Danielle, is an assistant basketball coach at Iowa State, and I cover the Cyclones quite a bit. This shy young lady came up to me and said, I see you on volleyball. I'd love to play volleyball someday. And I said, you should consider the Big Ten. It's close to Iowa where you guys live. And she actually, I put her in touch with some of the coaches at Minnesota. And here she is ending up at Wisconsin. And the freshman has stepped on the court and made an immediate impact. I just love how far she's come and watching her grow up. I know her dad is so proud of her. He caught my eye from the stands. I was like, can you believe it? Here she is all these years later. And she's had, thank you, Holly. She's had a wonderful start to her career. And Kelly Sheffield told us earlier today, when he recruited her as a sophomore, so many coaches around the country were just, you know, we love you, you're already great, you gotta come play for us. But Kelly Sheffield said, if you wanna play in the Big Ten, you got a lot of work to do. And he really challenged her. And that was one of the attractions. That's why she came to Wisconsin, because she wants to be good and she responds to uh, what Kelly has to say about how, how hard she's gotta work. Well, you gotta love players that want that. You know, that's rare to find. You know, a lot of players wanna hear what they want to hear that they're great and they're awesome but she's like okay all right i need to be better i need to be better than what i am this is what i want i want you to make me better had a wonderful freshman season again 11 of 18 against byu 6-2 first team all big 10 when she was recruited out of high school in her last year she was considered the 14th ranked recruit in the country they had it wrong look at the year she's had hitting over 400 in the big 10. Nice dig by McKissick. Chance in transition. Kept alive by Retke. What an athletic reaction along with Robinson. And then to the floor out of the middle by Forte. Well, some big plays on both sides of the net. First with McKissick making a huge play to keep that ball alive. But I tell you what, it's Forte. We're going to keep talking about her on a perfect pass. Get her the ball. Florida struggling from the service line. That's the only criticism for the Gators here in the second set. They hit 091 in the first, 562 so far here in the second. Give them all the credit in the world, particularly Tiara Caesar, because Caesar was really struggling to transfer out of Georgia. Here's Chavita, who's been right on target so far as a defensive specialist. 14 to 9. Florida has led throughout the second set. Chavita again. Good dig by Monsore. Caesar, tough chance going off speed. And Chavita there again with a good touch. Look at the mobility of Dana Recchi after a long rally. Tell you what, that's what makes her so impressive. Big moves, getting there, transitioning, but hitting this ball fast. She had to get on it quick. And you see Monterey in the back row getting in there. You got to respect it. She crashed in there on that ball knowing it's coming. But got blown up by that swing by Dana Recchi. How many times did Dana Recchi jump just in that particular rally and was still there? to put that ball away. Let's go back to Holly for more on the All-American middle blocker for Wisconsin. Will you oh, talk we'll do that you after talk we come about back. the mobility and movement. More when more we come Holly back, guys. when we come back. Yeah, we've got to go to a media timeout. 15-10. Well, you're talking about the mobility of Dana Redke at 6'8". Look at her be able to transition from defense to the slide so quickly, whether it's the block or coming around the backside of the setter. Those feet are true. And here's the reason why. When she was growing up and hitting all of her growth spurts, for 13 different years, she was a very serious jazz and tap dancer. She has been used to doing a lot of activity with her feet, and it shows. She plays so well, moves across the net, and it's very unique for a woman her size. Thank you, Holly. No question about that. Dana Retke is a unique talent who has had a magnificent collegiate career. Wants to have a championship. No question about that. Nice play by Caesar. And if she wants to, she will represent the United States for a long time in the Olympic Games and internationally. Struggled, if you will, against BYU. We talked about it. You know, Salima, 6 of 21. Well, those struggles are over. She, she's back to her usual self. 
as evidenced by that. Seven yeah, kills, one around. error, hitting over 350. Well, and right now you're, you're seeing Sydney Hilly getting her. Well, first of all, the ball control is really, really good right now for Wisconsin. Passing the ball well. These are perfect passes, flinging it back there. Not really having to force it from way off the net, which I saw a lot against BYU, which is part of those issues as well. And all of that said, Florida is leading 16 to 11. Caesar, wonderful bounce back, and Montserrat continues to be very offensive minded and so smart again eight kills yesterday against the Buckeyes when she's so balanced when she sets this ball she's high she looks like she's gonna set the ball to a, an attacker and just flings it over the net and everyone forgets I mean it's on the scouting report I know it is we all saw it yesterday we've seen it all season but she's so good at that it's a beautiful play and especially in that two hit a rotation where you've got both hitters in front Nice job finding that empty spot right in the middle of the court. That is a magnificent look. I love that look. You can see the block and the defense react or not, and the timeout is called by Wisconsin. So Wisconsin trying to slow things down, so we want to remind you, NBA Friday's doubleheader features some of the hottest teams in the NBA. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7, then it's go time at 7.30 and 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. And the ESPN app, the Boston Celtics and the Nets taking on, the, and then the Nuggets and the Warriors. Uh, Steph Curry injured an ankle just the other day, and he has been on an incredible hot streak, so we hope that he's back healthy and ready to go. That's NBA Friday brought to you by State Farm on ESPN. Back with Salima Rockwell, I'm Paul Sunderland. We've got a moment here, Salima. What did you think earlier of the match between Texas and Nebraska? Oh man, what a, what a match! You know, at first it was it was back and forth, and then you could see you could see Texas really just start to get in a groove, get in a rhythm. Certainly, Skylar Field was unbelievable, pretty much unconscious playing that in that match, and Logan Eggleston with her serve, so putting a ton of pressure on Nebraska, and they just couldn't get their footing and couldn't get get back in a groove. Lauren Stiverns wasn't set very much, you know, she was out the night before seeing her come back in the match they started to get get her going late but it was a little too too little too late Washington survives Purdue versus Kentucky to fill out the national semifinal bracket Kentucky as you can see the number two seed and looked absolutely unstoppable last night against a very very good team out of Conference USA Western Kentucky Haggerty taking a tough swing beautiful location for Haggerty Tell you, that's a tough ball to hit in that position off the net. You'll see the defense not in, in the position, and she sees it and hits that ball. Again, not super hard, but just right in the middle of the court where, where there's no defender. Logan Eggleston, Skyler Fields had a career high yesterday and came back with another 18 kills. Breon Butler was tremendous as well. So Texas has advanced again for the 13th time. Good contact. Haggerty out of the play. Not a lot of back row from Wisconsin, but they do there. Nice dig by Loberg and Haggerty again. Look at the block, Lauren Forte. Once again, number 24 in orange having a big, big finals match. Regional final, five kills, a couple of blocks. Just unbelievable moves by her and, and reading the play, Wisconsin making some good defensive efforts. But as soon as that ball, again, shifts a little bit to that side of the court, she makes her move and does a nice job pressing over the net. Florida had some serving issues early on, so going to the bench now to bring in serving sub. Chavita with another very nice reception chance here in transition. Look at Montserrat again. Lauren Barnes all over that. Saving dig by the Libero Barnes. A huge play by Lauren Barnes because I thought that ball was going to fall. It was the right time to do it. Barnes read it. A cheap blue got off the ground, laid out for that pancake. Knowing how important that play is, unbelievable move by Barnes. Haggerty now with seven kills on 14 swings, one air. She was almost perfect the other day against BYU. 
Good play by Caesar stretching out. Hall is blocked. That is a big block out of the middle. Danielle Hart, six foot four, second team All Big Ten. And I tell you what, saw that dig by Barnes, keeping the one ball alive, and then dug the second one off of Caesar during in the middle of that rally. It's Barnes keeping keeping the Badgers in it right now. Barnes again. Florida has led throughout. Haggerty, Robinson off the top of the block. Wisconsin used a timeout earlier on to try to slow down Florida. You think it's time for Florida to return the favor? I think they're going to take a look at it because there's a lot of momentum right now on that Wisconsin side. Yep, there you go. A timeout called by Mary Wise. Aptly named. This is a smart timeout. Giving up a couple of points here in a row. Being told it's a challenge, not a timeout called by Florida. Uh huh. Challenging whether or not the ball was up or down. You can challenge ball in or out, ball up or down, four contacts. Uh, ball in the plane of the net, three meter line foot fault, service line foot fault, a net touch or a touch off the top of the block. And again, three challenges per team. And unlike it, the Olympic play, was this ball down? What do you think, Salima? I think it's up. I thought it was up from the beginning. Um, and looking at it again, I, I think she's got both hands completely underneath it. It's just an awkward play and a weird bounce off of her hands so it could look down it's also a good time for a challenge with this momentum i agree with you on both counts i agree that the ball was up legally and i agree that it's a good use of the challenge and not having to burn a timeout because this set might get very very close just like the first between florida and the number one seed wisconsin badgers that was won by the badgers 30 to 28 after they had a very comfortable lead early on now, the call will be confirmed. The ball was indeed up, as we thought. Not absolutely right, Salima. Florida at 21 and 3. Wisconsin officially at 15 and 0. Yep, stays with Wisconsin. Now, if you're Florida, let's take a look at where they are offensively. What do they have to think about first? Well, first, of course, they have to handle the Wisconsin Badgers have been serving tough right in that seam between Caesar and. Hall, so they have to handle this ball first and look for a back row attack, maybe from Caesar. Mission accomplished, and over the top, oh, that that ball was down. That's good work by the second referee and the linesman aggressively looking at that play. Fantastic pass by Thayer Hall under pressure. Tell you what, that's what it's all about: handling the ball, keeping the defense, especially that block at the net. They know Caesar's gonna get set, or they could set the outside ball to Hall. But a nice job and a design play, tipping that ball over the top during that challenge. I'm sure that's what they discussed. And again, magnificent comeback in the second set for Caesar. Two kills in the first set, and seven here in the second. Carlton is dug on top of the net. Joust coming, ball still alive. Caesar, and that's gonna be four contacts. Well, that's tough. It looked like a set that was just not perfectly timed. You know, that sometimes with that rhythm coming out of the back row. And she's telling to her right, talking to her right now and saying, hey, I need it just a little faster. That's all. Caesar's been fantastic in the second set. How tough is she after a really difficult start? How tough is she coming right back to put the ball away? Well, and, and Monterey, I, I love the trust between the two of them going back to her and saying, OK, you told me what you needed. I'm going to give it to you. There, she sees the block. I mean, she could have hit that ball just straight ahead, cuts it across her body for the point. Seventh kill here in the second set, Florida with a 20 to 16 lead, trying to even this match at a set apiece. Florida is 5 and 0 against Wisconsin, but their most recent history does date back to 2015. Right side, tight set, Caesars all over that. And an unforced error by Loberg on the outside. Well, Loberg trying to make something with, with the ball. Couple of sets of ones tight on the right side of the court. Then they had to make some adjustments. Loberg just needs to chop that ball high and inside the court. 
Jay Demps, another freshman coming on, 6'2 freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Loeber goes to the sideline. Boy, Demps, welcome to it, and what a big swing by Jay Demps just off the sideline. I tell you what, I've seen her play all season. When she comes in the game, she takes some monster swings, gets up, tracks the ball well, and I tell you what, when they need a shout out and they need some points, she, she can do it. Wisconsin with some very valuable depth in Demps. Loberg was only five of 18 with three errors. Here's Caesar again. Back to Demps, no, yeah, to Demps again. Nice dig right on target by McKissick. And the off speed. What has Florida found? They're working the off speed very effectively against Wisconsin. Well, that's right now. Everybody's on their heels a little bit. You see the wing defenders a little bit deeper. They're back on that back row attack. They come a little bit deeper defensively waiting for the big swing. And I tell you what, that's what they decided. This is open. Let's score here right to the middle of the court. Timeout called by Wisconsin. And one of the keys, and you know this, is an All-American setter. Molly, Marlon Monterey is putting that ball in a very hittable position. So the defense is back on its heels. Monterey has been superb. Really good location and choice. Well, and you talk about the location, especially with a back row attack. You want to lead them far enough where they can really get a nice big approach, get on top of the ball. That ball's not drifting behind them. So they can take a big rip at it or they can tip over the top. Monterey locating beautifully tonight. Let's go down courtside to Holly, where for the Montserrat's, it's been a family affair for a long time at the Gators. You know, that's right. If people are watching this and thinking, I thought that Montserrat player graduated. <laughs> well, there's a good reason you're confused. There have been 11 straight years of Montserrat sisters at Florida. Sister Madison got the party started when she played for the Gators from 2011 to 2014. Then Allie transferred in from South Carolina 2015 to 2018. And Marley also crossed past 2018 until now. You know, Marley said, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go there and be in my sister's shadow, but I just decided I can outshine those shadows, and she has. She's been so terrific, but think of the security blanket for Mary Wise. High-level family, high-level volleyball IQ, and the Montserrat have been literally making a name for themselves because they just never leave. A name that will be never never be forgotten. It's been around for, it's been around for over a decade, and this Montserrat wearing number 21, has had a superb season leading the way. She's got another year, six foot junior, out of the Windermere area of Florida. That's in the Orlando area. And uh, as uh, Mary Wise repeated to us a couple of times during the conversation, the most improved player from the fall season into the spring, the SEC, like the Big 12 and a couple of other leagues, played in the fall and now extending into the spring. Big 12 also. Demps is roofed. Carlton, once again, along with Forte. I tell you, it's not just a big block. It's a controlled block. They do a nice job turning their hands back in and pressing back into the court. Look at that right hand of Har Holly Carlton pressing back into the court. Commanding that lead now for the Gators. And that's out of bounds multiple set points florida has led tiara caesar has completely turned her match around thayer hall as well lauren forte has been superb throughout caesar now with 10 kills on 34 swings after having only two kills in the opening set on 18 swings here's mckissick set point number one and this is that out of bounds She's definitely going after Demps there in serve receive. Of course, that's what she wants to do. But I tell you what, she's she's missed quite a few here tonight. And McKissick just needs to kind of drive that ball in the seams, keep that ball in play. Here is Chavita again, who's been really solid in the backcourt <laughs> until then. Misses it there. Florida nearly won the opening set with a storming comeback and they've come right out reset the table we're going at least four we're tied at a set apiece and the number one seeded wisconsin badgers a little bit on shaky ground
Tied at a set of piece, T.R. Caesar has been high flying and spectacular. When we come back, we'll go to the studio with Sam and Katie. And once again, and Katie talked about it, Tiara Caesar, the comeback player of the day so far, really struggled in the opening set and then put up some phenomenal numbers. And uh, save for that very slow start for Caesar and the rest of the Gators, they have been the better team. They could be up two sets to none. And then we'd really be talking about some headlines. Number one seed, Wisconsin. That 18 points, that's the fewest points they have scored so far in a, in a set so far this year. Of course, they've only lost a few, so they're usually scoring 25. Philly Sheffield hasn't had to sweat it too much so far on the year, but I imagine he's looking very closely at that pad and looking for some answers. Caesar doing a good job keeping that ball alive. Ball set too tight for this big block. Did Caesar get a piece? Looking for a touch. Both look, officials look at one another, and that ball missed out of bounds. Well, she definitely was going for it, and that's the, the right play when that ball is tight to the net to really take it, push it against the block, and, and throw it out of bounds. But she, she just missed the block. Loberg back to serve. So far, five kills on 19 swings. Four errors, so the offense is struggling so far, and that's going to be a back row blocker called against Montserrat. And that's what Wisconsin needs to do. Serve, serve tough to Florida. Force them to pass the ball over the net. Of course, off the net as well. That's what they want to do. Flo Wisconsin needs to up their serving game and really force Florida into some situations they don't want to be in. Good cover that time by Hilly. And then that missed wildly out of bounds. Tiara Caesar once again, the key to that play. Really good first contact and reception so far in the match. Wisconsin, for them, at their standard, hitting a paltry 167. And right now, Florida out hitting them at 168 after a very slow start. Carlton, number 40 in orange, transferred from North Carolina. Six foot seven, a combo right side, was a setter. She was five foot eight and a setter as a junior in high school, and now she's six foot seven and a top college player. She's had a wonderful career at Florida. Yeah, it's crazy when you say it, when you hear it out loud. Five foot eight as a junior in high school, and <laughs> she's six foot seven. That just doesn't happen. That had to hurt at some point, growing that many inches. <laughs> Javita again, who's been really solid as a DS so far for Wisconsin. And Tiara Caesar again. Wow. What a lesson for young players who are just putting, a, putting aside a bad start and just has been ripping the ball since. Yeah, so impressive. And, and moving that ball around now, I like how she's mixing up her shots. And that's when you know someone's comfortable, when they're, they're starting to mix up their shots, hit something different, not just hit the same shot all the time. And has been really good at the service line. We featured her before first serve. Showed a lot of her attacking, but really she is the total package. Isn't she, Salima? She absolutely is. And, and what she does from the service line and defensively is huge for Florida. And that's what, that's what helps them. That's what makes them so good. She and Thayer Hall. That was an easy serve to Chavita. And that ball just out of bounds. Caesar smartly lets that go. And let's go down Holly to, to Holly quickly. You guys talked about the resilience of Tiara Caesar and getting off to that slow start. Well, this is nothing new for her. She's had to overcome an ACL tear her senior year of high school. She has a rod in her leg. She has been through more adversity than most volleyball players. And out here, she just looks flawless so far. She overcame that quick start, or excuse me, that slow start. And she's really coming alive. Haggerty luckily gets that ball through the block. Thank you, Holly. Yeah, Tiara Caesar wearing number three in the orange jersey for Florida started two of 18 with two errors. So she hit zero. Since that time, she's nine of 18. Been passing nails and serving the ball very, very well indeed. Season high, four aces so far in the match. Tied at a set apiece. Forte, look at the dive and save. Hilly got that ball up, but Loberg was unable to follow. I like how Montserrat fires that ball in there to Forte. She's off the net, pushed far to the right side. She still knows that Forte is going to be available, and Forte's with his long arms can just fling it down. Montserrat, very offensive minded, but doing it at both ends already in double figures with Diggs.
What a good shot by Thayer Hall. Change in pace. That ball set was 11, 11 feet off the net. And let's start with that block touch by Dooley and Monterey. I think they're doing a nice job scouting, knowing what's coming from the Wisconsin side, controlling the touches. And of course, Thayer Hall is out there to, to finish and close. Well, that ball missed out of bounds. And I'll ask you again, Salima, because Wisconsin, everybody, consensus, number one team in the country. And here they are really being pushed by a Florida team that was seated at number eight. Are you surprised at the level or lack thereof so far from Wisconsin? Well, you know what? I, I think this is a very, very good Florida team. I, you know, and I, I'm not sure, you know, you don't, when you're not in it and you're not seeing them all the time, you just don't know. But I'm telling you what, you watch the offense of Florida and how they're yep. playing the game. I mean, they're, they're pushing them as hard as any team has so far this year. So I, I, I'm not surprised at how this match is going based on how Florida is playing. Lauren Dooley out of the middle, number 99 with a kill. And you make a great point because you look at Florida, seated at number eight, but they split with Kentucky, and Kentucky's really good. But then they had a couple of quote-unquote unusual losses, if you will, going back to Georgia and South Carolina. And that's why they were seated, but they looked like they were under because they're playing at a very high level and given Wisconsin everything they want, tied at a set apiece and on top eight six. Barnes, as advertised, has been superb at the Libero. We'll give you her defensive numbers already with 17 digs for Barnes and a shank pass. That's a rare mistake for Caesar. A big serve for Barnes going hard. I mean, this ball's not just going right at Caesar. She's driving with pace. An excellent server for Wisconsin. 12 ace so far on the year for Barnes. Carlton going off speed, good cover. Carlton again, look at the dig by Barnes. Oh look, Haggerty's down, Barnes is down, Retke couldn't get there in time. What a good effort by both teams and a break that time for Florida. But what the about the initial take by Barnes down the line? Well, unbelievable dig by Barnes, but this this play, they both kind of crash into each other. You've got nobody there to help. Everyone else is getting ready to hit. Here is Hall. Florida continues to lead. Tied at a set apiece. A little bit of a slick out of the middle that time. Hadn't seen that from Wisconsin. And Retke misses it wide. A very concerned Kelly Sheffield in his eighth year head coach, the number one seeded Wisconsin Badgers. They've been to the national Nixon. championship match three previous occasions. Lost to Stanford last year. Retke again going off one foot, cutting that ball back out of the middle. Well, they've got Haggerty in there playing all the way around. I know she's been in there a while, handling some of the passing responsibilities, and Florida's trying to trying to force the balls to her, to Loberg as much as possibly can, keep it away from Barnes. And I think that's what, what Florida's really working on doing. But they're, he wants Haggerty in there. Ha Haggerty's a competitor. She wants to be in the game, and he's going to use her as such. Shank pass, Florida and McKissick will not track that down. And when we spoke with head coach Sheffield, Kelly Sheffield earlier today, he said, Molly Haggerty is a big time player. I know exactly what I'm going to get from her in big, important matches. And now he's given her more responsibility to play all the way around instead of using Deanna Kraft and splitting that position. Tight pass. Carlton misses that into the cross court. And we're tied at 10. And a nice push here by Wisconsin, putting some service pressure on the side of Florida. And Holly Carlton, Carlton just needs to control that ball a little bit, limit those unforced errors. 
Wisconsin still really struggling at the offensive end for a team of their capabilities. Nice play by Chivita again, keeping that ball off the floor. Tight, quickly out of the middle and thrown cross body. Nice play. That's a good, quick move by Lauren Dooley. Wisconsin wants to call a violation there. They thought that that ball was, was carried or thrown cross body, but Dooley will get the heck out of Dodge and register the kill. <laughs> Well, and Dooley's just up and available. Gets her arm high, and they can fire that in there, and, and she doesn't get a ton of sets. But every once in a while, throw it in there, not really expecting it. She's going to get a one-on-one. -on -one. She's got long arms. She's at 6'6", six, six, and she can score. Throw being the operative word, Salima. I'll give you the <laughs> offensive numbers so far here in the third set. Kind of stunning when you look at what's, what Wisconsin ordinarily does, what their track record is. Caesar, that ball cannot be dug. Tiara Caesar once again has been just tremendous in this set after that kill. Tiara Caesar and Florida are hitting 294. Wisconsin 0 62. Wisconsin has not hit below 293 all season. And again, they're the second ranked offense statistically in the country at 345. And that's against only Big Ten competition. That's more like it if you're a Wisconsin fan. Loberg into the what, cross court. When they get the ball right in there to Hilly and she can fling that ball with that pace and that speed to the outside to Loberg, that's what, that's what she needs. That's the ball, that's the pace and the distance she needs. Chavita again getting lots of good touches out of the back row. Coach Sheffield said it doesn't happen very often, but it did there. Demps Chavita again, tracked down by Hilly. A little pinball and then tapped down. Ball still alive, but Caesar, Caesar violated the center line. What a play by Dana Retke. And Georgia Chevita wearing number seven, making a number of tremendous defensive plays. Wow, what a finish. And you gotta give Caesar credit. She's in there in that awkward position, gets her hands high, tries to make a play on it. Carlton. Misses that out of bounds, so that's a couple of misplaced swings that time by Carlton on the outside, wearing number 40 in orange. Eight of 21, third error now for Florida so far here in the third set. Tied at a set apiece. Wisconsin won the opener 30 to 28, and then Florida dominated the second 25-18. Talk about Holly Carlton. Monterey is trying to fling that ball there, back there, getting it against the flow, give her some space to work with. That worked earlier on in the match right now. Carlton not able to get on top of it and score, but I think she'll find her way back. Still a nice play. Nice early, quickly read by Sydney Hilly. I'll tell you, Chivita number seven, the transfer out of Wichita State, has come back from three ACL injuries. She's been really, really valuable for Wisconsin in this third set as they have come back to take the lead. Well, in all of those long rallies, you say her name, and then you say her name again. She's right in the middle of the action, making huge plays for Wisconsin. Working on Caesar and up to the task. Going off speed here, going to be a chance, probably go to Haggerty. Got to come over. That was a little bang-bang play in the backcourt between McKissick and Hall. And missed out of bounds. Wisconsin looking for a touch, but none detected. Chavita saying, yeah, indeed, the Florida block got a piece. So we might look to the sideline for a challenge. Looks like Loberg wasn't quite sure. Chavita was pretty sure. They're all trying to... Now, Sheffield doesn't want to waste the challenge, that's for sure. He's asking his players. Well, yeah, he knows, and we've seen it, Salima. This match could go on for a long, long time. And going back to the match earlier today, take another look. What did you see there, Salima? I, I saw it over the block, no touch. It was close enough that, you know, if we ran it back a few times, we might see it, but I saw no touch. Well, Caesar somehow keeps the ball alive. 
Hart, nice play in transition on the slide. It's not only Dana Recti who can go behind the setter. We've come to the media timeout. Tied at a set apiece. Wisconsin leading by one in the third. And after a slow start for Tara Caesar, offensively, she has picked it up and really led the Gators here. She started two of 18 and has now 10 kills on 24 swings. But I tell you what, mixing up her shots, staying confident, and Marley Monterey staying confident in her attacker in Tiara Caesar. Didn't look like it to start, but Caesar once again with a double-double. She's a double-double machine playing at both ends of the floor. And again, getting off to really, you just could have to be a, just a terrible start. Nice dig by Barnes. But Caesar has come flying back. Caesar out of the backcourt. No to Forte. Lauren Forte has been solid all night long in Omaha for the Gators. Well, and that's the trouble with this offense. They run her on this three, right? So they want to push the middle blocker of Wisconsin over just a little bit and see, do I stay neutral to defend Caesar on that D ball or do I have to make a choice? And sometimes you just kind of freeze. You're right in the middle of it and it's so fast and high, hard to defend for the Wisconsin side. Haggerty comes right back. Had some back issues early in her career. Had to take a red shirt season out of Glen Ellen, Illinois. Was wonderful uh, in uh, the regional semifinal match. An easy win for Wisconsin over BYU. 14 of 28, no errors. And putting up really good numbers again. 9 of 23 so far on the evening. Hall comes right back. I'll tell you what, with the serve, I mean, they're doing what they're intending. They're serving Jar Caesar in front, getting her down on the floor. Then they can send two blockers to, to Thayer Hall, but Thayer Hall still able to hit around that big block of Wisconsin right now. Boy, has Florida turned this match around after a very slow start, and then they barely lost the opening set 30-28. to 28. Loberg going off speed, easily covered by Hall. And into the cross-court corner. That's a nice comeback, isn't it, Salima, by Holly Carlton? It is, and they know they need her. They, they've used her early, especially when the outside hitters weren't having some success. They were going to Carlton and Forte, and, and Carlton needs to continue to have big numbers, high numbers, and just not make errors right now. Five kills, five errors. Right side to Robinson again. McKissick has been so solid. Caesar having to go off speed, goes high hands. What a save by the setter of the year, Sidney Hilly. It looked like that was going to be real trouble. But you see Haggerty's in the middle back, just playing this ball, makes a play, spins all the way around off of this ball, off the block. Perfect ball. And Hilly again, so good at clearing the net, handling those tight plays. And I love what Dan Danielle Hart is providing offensively for Wisconsin. <laughs> Look out below. Recky looking over to apologize on the uh, overpass. That ball was off of Dooley, and it was still alive, but it happened so fast the Gators couldn't respond. It was really fast. Oh. Wisconsin, yeah, she almost took Caesar's head off, and now she almost decapitated uh, <laughs> Lauren Dooley. Uh, Dooley looking to throw that one down cross body and missed it now 1917 advantage for Wisconsin and a timeout is going to be called by Florida. Back and forth three nothing run here by Wisconsin to force the timeout. Take us inside the Florida huddle Salima and what uh, Mary Wise has got to deal with right now because they are right there dead even well, they, virtually if with uh, the number one seeded team in the tournament they are right there and, and it's really been a couple of just errors and and it's limiting those unforced errors right now Dooley hit that ball out of bounds Wisconsin of course doing a nice job at the net but she's she's talking to them about what what we need to do right now to side out again where are they lined up defensively sometimes we can't see what they're doing until the, the ball is served but that's what she's talking to them about how can we come back here just like we've been doing we're down by two points we're in good shape right now and hey let's let's talk about where we need to, to put the ball 
Yeah, indeed, Florida has learned by now that they don't have to do anything special. They just need to be Florida. And while we've got a timeout, want to remind you on Tuesday, catch an MLB matchup as the Mets take on the Cubs. It's the first of a three-game series at Wrigley, and it begins at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. I'm Paul Sunderland out in Southern California. Salima Rockwell is in our LHN studios in Austin, Texas. And this tournament is taking place under a controlled environment and glad to have it in Omaha, Nebraska, the CHI Arena. Now that we are down to the regional final round, Washington three sets to two, winner over Pittsburgh earlier today. They were down two sets to none. And Texas over Nebraska, 3-1. So Texas into the national semifinals for the 13th time and for Washington their fifth trip and the first in quite some time since 2013 there you see the bracket the winner of this between Wisconsin and Florida gets the Texas Longhorns on Thursday night and Salim and I will be heading out tomorrow are you packed are you packed yet no I'm not I, I mean I'm close <laughs> I can't pack as oh, Talking about a pack that was a packed block straight down that time by Retke Man, she moves so well. She's saying how that kind of hurt, but gets there, closes a big monster swing by Hall, and huge stuff. <laughs> Dana Recchi averages 1.6 blocks per set. And if you're not familiar with Vol, that's a big number. That's a really, really big number. And Wisconsin, only behind Maryland, she still play, yeah. <laughs> shaking that one off. She says, God, that one hurt. Middle blockers usually don't, they don't look so good when they go to get their rings. No. <laughs> Shank pass here. And coming out of the timeout, Wisconsin has continued to put pressure. And she's playing with that broken right finger on her right hand, and Lauren Barnes back to serve. Lauren Barnes has been causing Florida some fits. That tough serve going deep into that corner, looking at the passer hitter and working those seams on the left side of the court. Florida got to get out of this rotation right now. Starts with a good pass. Perfect pass by Caesar and a kill down the line by Thayer Hall. I love that set all the way to the pin. Hangs it right where she likes it. So she's got all shots available. And Thayer Hall so good at cracking that ball down the line. And Hall likes Caesar bouncing back after a slow start now with 12 kills on 32 swings. Barnes took Wisconsin on a 4 nothing run to carve out this lead. A chance to get right back in it. Caesar again off the edge. Hilly scrambling at the defensive end. She is really a good defender. That ball was set too tight. Salima, why was that set such a problem? It's a rare mistake for Montserrat. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure. I was watching just the defense and looking at her finish that ball, and I saw it drifting towards the net, but that's a tough move for, for Caesar in that situation. But what a play by Hilly on the defensive end. I tell you what, Wisconsin playing with a lot more fire, getting things going here. Not sure, that ball just fell inside just a little bit. Sometimes it's not a perfect set. Devin Robinson taking advantage of that opportunity. 6-1 run now by Wisconsin. Second timeout called by Mary Wise. 22 to 18 is the advantage. Let's take you back to the start. Wisconsin got out to a very big early lead. They led 13 to 9 at an early timeout in the opening set. Closed it out because Florida came storming back behind Lauren Forte, block and play in defense, taking advantage of some poor plays by Wisconsin. Wisconsin was fortunate to win that opening set 30 to 28. Florida continued their good play in the second. They led 15 to 10 at the media timeout. Closed it out 25 18. And then it was Florida early, and now Wisconsin's turn to mount a comeback. What has Wisconsin done to improve the way they've played? Well, I think they're keeping the ball alive, but they're not just playing good defense. They're transitioning and they're finishing plays right now. They're finishing those long rallies, and that's what they hadn't been doing before. Florida was winning those long rallies. Even though Wisconsin was playing good defense, they weren't finishing, and I, I think that's the difference right now. Offense is clicking for them a little bit more, a little bit more efficiently, and, and just playing at a higher level with more urgency. We talked about Dana Retke, and we also showed you that Retke gets an awful lot of help. Look at this distribution. Hilly moves it around, but Haggerty, Robinson, and Loberg are all doing a very nice job around their kill leader, Dana Retke. 11 of 23, hitting 391, and now Wisconsin. Wisconsin fans aren't used to hearing this. Their hitting percentage is up to 206. It was down around 155. Remember, they hit 345 on the year. 
Well, they're, they're Florida doing has fantastic. Been really good. Mm -hmm. Fantastic job just moving that ball around, like you said. And, the, and some of the service pressure has really been an issue for Florida as well. And the Wisconsin block able to slow some balls down. Georgia Tavito, we talked about how good she has been in defense and first contact and at the service line, and just then she misses that one. She's got two service aces to go along with 10 digs, doing a very, very nice job in the back court. Now in the right back. Those 10 digs are one shy of a season high. This will be her only year with the Badgers. Easy serve to Barnes. And missed out of bounds, a break for Florida. A big break, but I tell you, I like how Barnes moves across. Haggerty's in there in that passing pattern. Uh, might be just pretending like she's gonna pass this ball, but watch Barnes cut, cut off this ball as she goes after her. The nice move. Now she's switching positions because they're going line to line, so Barnes can't steal that ball, but she ends up serving right to her. Off the block deflection, of course, you go to Dana Retke. You're talking about Loberg. She's struggling. Six for 29 with six errors, so she's hitting zero. And on the year, very, very effective as an outside hitter, hitting 302. So Florida's done a very, very good job. King on Loberg. Carlton finding a spot dug by Chivita. A beautiful block once again by Forte. Lauren Forte, the transfer from Cal, was all Pac-12 before she got her degree and then transferred at midseason. And I tell you what, she has brought so much to this Florida team. Mary Wise said she is just a joy to be around, and it's been so wonderful to have her. She's not just a great athlete, but she's a great human being. So What a Florida swing out of the backcourt to bail out. Huge swing. That looked like it was going to be a free ball for Florida. A chance for them, Salima, to get within one. And this is where they don't use her often, but Loberg can swing out of the back row. She can attack out of the back row. They were using her in system earlier in the season, she and Haggerty. Now they're just kind of using her when they need her. But I tell you what, she's found those corners, and she's able to do that super effectively. Huge swing, Salima. That's like a two-point switch potentially, and it gets Wisconsin to a set point. And off speed once again. Why is Florida having so much success? So many tips, front court, back court, are finding their way to the floor against Wisconsin. I tell you, everyone plays defensive just a little bit differently. They're trying to force them to do some things that they don't want to do normally defensively, and that's that's every defense has a hole. They have their positions that are open. Set point number two for Kelly Sheffield. Tiara Caesar, four aces so far on the match. That slow start for Caesar, a distant memory. She's been fantastic ever since the opening set. And misses that. Going for the low, flat serve with a lot of movement. And Wisconsin, the number one overall seeds and a lot of people's favorite to win the national championship are one more set win away from going to the semifinals on Thursday. Dana Retke, always a very dangerous weapon to any opponent. Wisconsin up, two sets to one over Florida. Live once again to Omaha, Nebraska. ESPN's continuing coverage of the 40th NCAA Volleyball Championships with three-time Penn State All-American Salima Rockwell. I'm Paul Sunderland. Wisconsin holds on. Huge swing out of the backcourt by Grace Loberg to seal the deal virtually. Wisconsin up two sets to one. It's been back and forth, Salima. And now, does Florida need to adjust, change anything at all? Or do they just need the belief, quite frankly, that they could pull off what would be a huge upset? Well, I tell you, I, I, I believe that they believe they can do it. I, I can see it on their faces. There's nothing about their body language that would suggest otherwise. I think Wisconsin just picked up their game, started playing just a little bit cleaner, handling the ball a little bit better. And Florida just needs to respond. This is going to be a battle, and I think we're, we're in for the long haul. 
Haggerty, very smart shot out of the back row, gets things started here in the fourth set. Washington, Texas have already advanced. The winner of this one plays on Thursday night against the Texas Longhorns into the semifinals for the 13th time. And then coming up later tonight, of course, right here in Omaha, it will be Purdue out of the Big Ten taking on Kentucky champions of the SEC and the number two seed. Haggerty off speed twice. That's a really good lesson for young players. Well, just mixing it up, and that's what she does so well. Out of the back row, hitting a roll shot out of the back row is difficult to defend. And, of course, that tool off the edge of the block. These are the moments. That's exactly what Ke Kelly Sheffield say. She lives for these moments. Haggerty now with 11 kills, matching Retke for team high. Good block out of the middle by Dana Retke. And that ball missed out of bounds. Exactly the start that Wisconsin wanted and on conversely that Florida did not. Florida had opportunities to take the advantage in the opening set, and I think they had opportunities as well in the second until Grace Loberg had that miraculous shot out of the backcourt. Memorable. Good pass by McKissick and Caesar. Even Chavita could not come up with that one. Now, a lot of heat. That ball's coming off of her hand fast. And, and with that speed to the pin, then she can hit that ball down the line. You watch the Wisconsin block, can't get fully set up, and they're going to take a little bit of cross court away from her on that ball. Caesar now with 14 kills, 49 swings to get there. Here's the Libero McKissick. Javita, nearly perfect pass. Back row to Hall. Chavita again. She and Barnes have been fabulous in the back court. Carlton, tough swing, goes off speed. Hilly out of the play. Good set to Caesar, going high hands. And the ball falls. Wisconsin just better in the long rally. Keep better in the ball. Oh, just staying in it. Chivita just everywhere right now, making all of these defensive plays. See Haggerty taking something a little bit off of it, and both Montserrat and Caesar kind of in that same position for that ball in the middle of the court. She can't turn around and, and make it, make that play. Haggerty with three quick kills to start this fourth set. And Chivita, again, I love the tomahawk at the end where the shot off the top of the block almost went over her head. She had been really good. The transfer, once again, out of Wichita State, originally from Milan, Italy, has had three ACL injuries and repairs, Coach Sheffield was telling us earlier today. And she comes from a volleyball mad country. He said she wanted to play so badly when she came in so quickly. And he said, just give it a minute. We got to take care of your knee. Let's make sure you're you're ready to go. And I think it, all that time they spent taking care of it has paid off. Well, I don't think I would vote for a DS to be an MVP of a match, but she, she has been incredibly important so far to the Wisconsin effort. Up two sets to one and now on top 4-1 in the fourth. That ball served out of bounds. Holly Carlton will give you her number. Caesar lead the, leading the way with 14. Forte has been really good. Six of 12, hitting 500. Carlton hitting zero. She's taken some very difficult swings. Five kills, five errors. Look at that angle, but missed out of bounds by Haggerty. Trying to stay with the off speed. She was yeah. three for three prior to that miss. <laughs> that was a monster swing, but I like how they're moving her around a little bit too. That ball was inside, kind of what they call it a 32 or a rip, trying to move some things around for the offense for Wisconsin right now. Back to Haggerty, block covered by Chavita. Chance for Florida, haul down the line, dug by Barnes. And that ball is going to be outside the antenna. What a good swing by Thayer Hall out of the back row. And I tell you, it was the read on the defensive play. You see that ball come to Haggerty on the outside. You know she's going to chop this ball down the line. And watch where sh Thayer Hall just shades over to the right side of the court and is ready. Set me this ball. Even in a three-hitter situation, they've got another option. We have Hall hitting in between those spaces between the block. Is that a game face or what? And also, that's paying attention in the film session and taking it out onto the competition court. Wonderful read that time by Hall.
to Haggerty once again. Where's she going to go this time? Off the edge, no. Caesar's got it. Hall out of the back row. Chavita had the dig, and here comes Florida. A 4 nothing run now for the Florida Gators to come right back and take the lead. I tell you, it's really been interesting watching Florida. They just are counting on different people at different times. It's been Forte out of the middle. It was Caesar out of the outside and, and Carlton at times, and now it's Hall. Whoa. What a serve. <laughs> Deep corner. Wow. A serve by Holly Carlton. That, just that's just, nice. there's no answer for that. No, there isn't. That's just an, a fantastic serve. And another. Hilly off the net. Out of the back row. That's blocked. Covered that time by Barnes. And Haggerty. Haggerty has been bailing out Wisconsin right now at the start of this fourth set. They got off to a good start, but they've gotten into a little bit of a tough patch, and she's come through four kills already here in the set. Well, and that's what they need her to do. When anything's off the net or when they're out of system, they're digging some balls, but if they're not going to be perfect, Haggerty, they're lucky to have her on the left side. Taking out the trash. you got to have somebody who's willing and able to do it. A lot of di difficult swings. Caesar way off the net. Dug by Barnes. What a good play that time by Tiara Caesar. Tiara Caesar hitting that ball from 15 feet off the net and created that opportunity for Forte. That's not an easy ball, and it was a big swing, a, a huge swing on the outside. Look at this, out of system, just kind of smart, reaching high and deep. Barnes getting a hold of it and just can't keep it on her side of the net. Bertie Hedrickson on the floor now for Florida as well to play some defense. Nice play by McKissick hanging in. Not a good first touch by Hilly. McKissick and Haggerty again. When you teach a young outside hitter, when you work with young players, she's it. She has tremendous versatility of shot. She really does. I mean, it's it's the vision and it's the patience. She knows where the ball is, what she needs to do with it, not trying to do too much. With, with something that doesn't exist. She doesn't try to hit angles that aren't there. Haggerty, five kills in the set already with 14 on 35 swings. Retke leading the way as a team now, Wisconsin hitting 250, fully 100 points below their season average. Paige Hammonds, veteran out of Louisville, on to serve. Caesar has really played good defense throughout the whole tournament hall. Pretty tight. Did she get a touch? And yeah, high flat. Nice kill by Thayer Hall. Yeah, really nice defensive play by Caesar in the back row with her hands. But Hall, I'm telling you right now, she wants it. They know she's going after it here, and they can count on her right now to get a kill. And rightfully so. We talked about how Caesar has come back after a slow start. Robinson throws that ball out of bounds. Wisconsin is really struggling in a couple of different phases, but all credit going to Thayer Hall for she too, like Caesar, really bouncing back after a tough opening set. What's going through Kelly Sheffield's mind right now? He hasn't had to deal with too many situations like this so far on the year. No, he hasn't had to deal with much, but I think, you know, he's an experienced coach. He's used to battles, certainly in the Big Ten, long battles, long rallies. So they, they know how to stay the course, and he's just going to be super methodical in his approach and what he's doing and smart with what he's saying, checking out his stats. Hey, where are we in this rotation? What do we need to do right now? But not, not overthink, not over panic, that's for sure. Right, he's looking at the stats right now on Holly's favorite new technical tool, the swiveling iPad. <laughs> Here's Barnes. One of those two. Been fabulous in the Libro, working on Caesar. Hall is roofed. Robinson on the outside, the freshman, with who else? The All American and last year's Big Ten Player of the Year, Dana Retke. Giving her a little shove, like, wow, that was an amazing block. Pumping her up. That's what I love about Dana Retke. Sometimes she gets more excited sometimes for other people than she does uh, all the time than she does for herself. So. Perfect pass thrown straight down by Montserrat, who continues to be smart 
selective and very effective as an offensive-minded setter. And I tell you, she doesn't just go up with one hand. Both hands are up, looking like she's going to set the ball, and then at the last second throws that left hand. Both hands, there goes the left hand, and then catches you off guard. That's how you train a setter to attack a ball. McKissick, that ball's still alive and not for long. Nice hustle by Florida, but Rocky cleaning it up at the net. So good at just reading plays as the ball comes over the net and taking care of it. You know, we talked an awful lot, and rightfully so, about the defense of Wisconsin, but how about this Montserrat 17 digs, Tiara Caesar with 15, and Ellie McKissick with 15 as well. And I tell you, that's why we have the match that we do. There's yeah, a lot exactly of right. great defensive plays, and it's really who's going to finish these rallies, who's, who's good in transition right now. Dug again by Caesar, Wisconsin, trying to get it back within one. Going to Retke, no, they go the other way. To Loberg, and that off the top of Caesar's hand. Tell you what, Wisconsin being able to finish these plays huge right now. You're going to see a little bit of room for Loberg to work over the top and deep into the court behind where Caesar is hanging out in the middle back. Perfect delivery and quickly to the outside once again from Sidney Hillett. Off speed again is able to get to the floor. Wow, I mean, eight just, kills just yesterday. Eight kills yesterday. You got to absolutely love this as an All-American <laughs> setter. For did Russ Rose let you be that offensive-minded when you were playing at Penn State? I was offensive. I didn't do the set over. You know, I wasn't so sure. That wasn't really what we were doing back there. It was that more attacking. Thing. But I, I love this. I, I wasn't sure about it before in, in years past, but I like it. Connection not quite there, but Retke going off speed and Holly Carlton unable to keep the ball alive. 12-11, Wisconsin leading two sets to one, 30-28, opening set. God, that was really interesting. 25-18, Florida clearly the better team in the second set, and Wisconsin won the third, 25-22. Caesar ripped that ball down the line, but out of bounds. Salima is the serving. Big Ten tested of Wisconsin starting to wear down the receivers of Florida. Well, I tell you, it's it's been some a lot of pressure from the service line. I, I think so. And I think, you know, maybe not completely wear down. I think Wisconsin is, is picking it up like they they're serving tougher than they were earlier. So I think that's that's different and different for Florida for sure. But they're, they're still hanging in there and they're handling this ball. OK, I, you know, I'm, I'm not. I don't think they're shanking balls all over the place right now. Just a little bit off the net. Here's McKissick again. Recky on the slide. Good block touch. Caesar ball set a little bit tight. Turns it down the line again. That's two in a row. She's missed out of bounds. What do you do with that tight set? win that kind of matchup against a huge block in front of you. Well, and it's exactly what she's looking and, and trying to do. She wants to hit either off the edge or go just outside the block down the line. And, and McKissick has set a few balls like that. I wonder if that's an intentional, if she wants the ball that way or if it's just a little too tight. Because sometimes, sometimes hitters ask for it out of system. They're better at hitting that ball that way. But she's trying to hit down the line. It's available, just missing. I don't want that ball that tight with Dana Retke looking at me from the other <laughs> side. I, I don't want that. Forte, aggressive delivery by Montserrat out of the middle, and Florida retains the 14-13 advantage. And you talk about firing that ball in there. Montserrat knows that, that Forte is up, and there's some space in the block right now. Hilly wasn't all the way in there. They're kind of waiting for that ball to go outside, so there's a little bit of space in that gap for Forte to work with. Forte having a big regional final the transfer from Cal I'll give you your numbers in just a minute off speed once again Caesars there Hall working out of the back court and just missed out of bounds boy that was really really close she wanted that and that and that was the right play Caesars on the ground she makes that stab is running around trying to get to the outside and you've got their Hall there to keep you in system just missed that ball out of bounds 
Forte is 8 of 14, hitting 571. Here's Hilly. Tied at 14. Must win situation for Caesar and for Florida. Off speed again. Boy, tipping and rolling. Really good versatility for Tiara Caesar and the rest of the Florida attackers. We'll take the media timeout. The Gators up by one. Florida has found an open spot on the court for Wisconsin, doing a nice job with the off-speed game. And I tell you, Wisconsin's in there back on defense because this is a Florida team that can hit hard and deep. But right now, the scout is this is where they're able to score. And Florida doing a nice job exposing that weakness in the Wisconsin defense. Well, and Salima, you saw that time and again. Those all, all those balls are going where? Right in the middle of the campfire. It's hot there. You don't want to go in there, but that's something that's been scouted. That's something that's been seen by Florida. And they are really executing because time and again, they're finding the floor. Coming out of the timeout, Florida must win situation, trailing two sets to one. The winner gets Texas. Out of the middle, no. Tough swing for Hall off the net outside the court. Got to keep that ball in. Oh, did. Fair Hall saying it went off the block into the antenna, so we might have a challenge. She was adamant about that call. And she's going to get the call. Let's take another look. She Watch Robinson hits. on the perimeter. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. There it is. That's the right call. Good job by Thayer Hall. Battling for the right call there. Tool off the edge of the block into the antenna. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely the right call, the right decision. And if Kelly Sheffield thought otherwise, he would have challenged it. I think initially they called it the other way, and Thayer's yeah. ar arguing it. Thayer Hall. And maybe she's looking at the line judges. I, I shouldn't speculate too much, but Hilly coming over there to question why they changed the call. And going to explain to her head coach, Margie Ray, is the first referee, Joe Gustafson, is down courtside. And no challenge. Uh, it should just be play on. The call has been made, and Thayer Hall said, what the heck are you talking about? That went <laughs> off of Wisconsin and out of bounds into the antenna. And she was exactly right. Big call. A really big call. 16-14, the advantage for Florida, looking to even this match at two sets apiece. The first time out, Wisconsin. A little confusion down courtside. You heard the PA announcer say that that was the first time out called by Wisconsin. Mary Wise wondering what's taken so long. And I, I agree with Coach Wise. For a call that didn't have a challenge, it's time to get this thing rolling for both, for both teams. But particularly if you're a Florida fan. Caesar, four aces already. Been superb. Danielle Hart, oh, that ball missed just out of bounds. Boy, that was that was really close to the end line. We might have Definitely. a challenge now. They thought it was a touch. Either way, they packaged all of those calls into one. So whether it's a touch or in or out, they can challenge this, this call. Yeah, in the same action, if you will, at the net, you can take a look at a net violation, a touch, or whether or not the ball was in and out. It doesn't matter which element of those three that you particularly go to the second referee and question the call about. This is huge. The ball was called out. Florida, if the call st stands, will be on top 17-14, trying to send this match to five sets. That ball's definitely out. You Definitely see it that way, out. Salima? Yeah, it's clearly out. But am I right in saying, and you mentioned it, they can still look to see in the same combination, they can look to see if there was a touch, because the ball was clearly out. Correct. Yeah, and, that, and that's where, you know, the refs, when they, when they change that, they want to make sure they're getting this right. So on that la last action of the play, any of those challenges can be 
kind of clumped into one. So they're going to look and see if they see a touch on this as well. Not seeing anything. Montserrat is really demonstrative that she did not touch it, but <laughs> as always been the case, volleyball players are notorious liars. <laughs> not me. No way. No, no. I was speaking of everybody but you, Salima. Everybody uh, but you. <laughs> well, coming up later on, you've got the number two seed, Kentucky Wildcats. Only one loss against them this year, and that was to Florida. Kentucky played superbly yesterday against Western Kentucky, and it's going to be Florida's ball. So the call is confirmed. The ball was out. There was no touch, and it's 17 14. Wisconsin, remember Salima, we showed you that graphic. They have not played a five set match all season long. They've had a lot of issues like everybody has with COVID. They've only played five matches now, including in the tournament since February 21st. Haggerty restoring some order and firing things up. Man, she got on that ball, a little bit of a stare down at the end of it. I tell you what, Haggerty wants to win this match. 15 kills now and taking some very difficult swings. Easy serve to McKissick. Loberg down the line, beautiful dig. Tight pass, but dealing with it, Danielle Hart. That was really a good play by number 18. A lot of players would have been trapped by that set, Salima. Absolutely, nice job getting off the net and still keeping her vision and, and being able to see the block, but, but Hilly going up there with one hand, Hart handling it really well. High flat, what a good response once again. Thayer Hall. And I tell you what, that high flat shot, I mean, I'd like to see it more, especially against these big blocks. That's what you wanna do, skip high hands and you train that. You train that every day. Coaches are looking at, hey, how can we hit high off the hands and out of bounds so no one can chase it down? 17 kills now for Hall off the top of the tape and missed out of bounds by the serving specialist Hammond. So he'll head back to the sideline. Hall 17 out of 40. Caesar, she's going to need a couple of days rest. All these teams have two days off before the semifinals. Washington and Texas have already advanced. The winner of this one gets the Texas Longhorns the number four seed. Wisconsin the number one seed. Florida the number eight seed. Perfect pass. Barnes, that's going to be a net violation. So a net violation called against Wisconsin and the lead is there once again. Florida maintaining that very small separation. Thayer Hall now with 18 kills. Good save by Haggerty. That could have been a real problem. Soft block here. Hall, not a good set in transition. Way off the net. But Thayer Hall looking like Molly Haggerty doing a great job finding some open space. Tell you, stepping up big time here. And it's not just taking these wild swings, knowing where the open spot on the court is there. You see the frustration in Haggerty, but a nice job when that ball is inside and you've got Recky right in front of you. Chop it down the line. Beautiful shot by, by Fair Hall. Really smart. 2017 is the advantage. Timeout Wisconsin. And let's go down courtside to Holly Rowe. Well, Thayer Hall's reality have exceeded her dreams. She thought in her career she would grow up and play basketball and volleyball at Wofford near her hometown of Spartanburg, South Carolina. But she said she really owes her mom. Her mom forced her to go to a volleyball practice, literally shoved her in the door. She said, I had both arms on the side of the door and I was not going in and my mom pushed me in. After one volleyball practice, I knew it was love. I, I fell in love with this sport. And even though she had still wanted to play uh, basketball moving forward and maybe be in the WNBA, she said, those plans have changed. Here I am at Florida and boy, you can see the multi-sport athlete. She's all over the floor and she has got a calm presence about her, a killer attitude here tonight for the Florida Gators. Good thing her mom pushed her into that practice.
Well, it's good for everybody, Holly, to have Thayer Hall in the game of volleyball. She has done so much for the sport, so much, of course, for Florida, and right now, stepping up in a major way. They've counted on other people earlier on in this in this match, but I tell you what, uh, right now, I, I'm setting Thayer Hall. Well, Thayer Hall and her teammate and position mate, if you will, Tiara Caesar, have really shown their mental toughness and their competitive spirit because both of them really struggled at the start. I know I'm repeating this, but a lot of players, a lot of players at high level programs, a lot of players with a lot of talent get off to a start that they did. They would struggle the rest of the match. They have been fantastic. Their body language is good. Their energy is good. And they're trying to force a fifth set tiebreaker here. Florida now leading 20 to 17. Just to finish the thought from Holly, Thayer Hall has also had to deal with numerous injuries throughout the course of her early career. She's overcome all of that, having a really, really good year. Loberg is stuffed on the outside. The blocking, Lauren Dooley, number 99, along with Holly Carlton. Just getting the job done. Florida serving a tough ball to Molly Haggerty and forcing Sydney Hilly to bump set out there to Loberg. They're going to get set. They're going to be in a good position. A nice job by Florida all the way around. A serve. No. Barnes tracks it down. Free ball to Florida. Could decide the set. Barnes again. And look at that. Wow, what a play. Lauren Barnes not once but twice. Unbelievable save. And then Holly Carlton called into the net. Barnes just keep things alive. She doesn't ever stop. You think it's going to be an A, she ch chases it down. You think a ball is going to hit the floor, she's flying in there. Lauren Barnes really saving the Badgers on multiple occasions. Saved a two-point switch. Could easily be and should be probably 22-17. And maybe the set is gone. You can't win without a classy, talented, tough Libro. Here's Chivita. Thayer Hall comes right back off the edge. Great response by Florida. And I tell you, what a get by Monterey flying in there. That was a fast pass. She's coming in out of the back row. He handles it nicely, and Thayer Hall going off the edge. We've watched Marley Monterey throughout her career. She has really, really worked at her craft and improved. First rate setter. Offensively and defensively. Caesar from off the net going off speed. Loberg is there. Chance again, Carlton. Retke again on the slide. Barnes again on her back trying to keep the ball alive and the ball bouncing off the tape. And Florida just looks destined right now to force a fifth set tiebreaker. I tell you, Dooley handling that ball and that was just an awkward bounce. Barnes trying to keep it, keep it alive, but just can't, can't finish that play. Dana Retke is having an efficient match as she always does except for the other day, we'll give you that number again against BYU. Wisconsin calls a timeout. Retke is 13 of 29, hitting a very high percentage. But Salima, you follow the Big Ten very, very closely. It doesn't seem to me that that connection that we featured before the start of this match between Hilly and Retke is at the level it has been previously. Am I overstating that? Well, maybe a little bit. I mean, I think that what we've seen before is how many balls that Dana Recky, I mean, she's getting a lot of swings, don't get me wrong, 29 swings on the on the match is a lot, but I tell you, there have been times where she's led the team in, in whether it's kills or even attempts, and right now, they're moving the ball around just a little bit more and trying to give her opportunities, but let me tell you, you look at what Florida's doing, some of that off speed, so they get the ball on Grace Loberg, they know that ball's going behind to Dana Recky, so then they're moving their block, in that transition play, even though Loberg plays the ball, and and I like how they're they're playing the game right now. So, got some hands in front of her. Defense can play around it. So, so there's a lot involved with what they're doing. They're not completely. Obviously, she's playing well, slowing her down completely, but enough to kind of neutralize it a little bit and have her not hit 
the astronomical numbers that she's used to. And Florida doing a great job blocking the ball. Want to remind everybody, NBA's Friday doubleheader features some of the hottest teams in the NBA. Coverage begins with NBA countdown at 7, then it goes. It's go time at 7.30, 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. With Salima Rockwell, I'm Paul Sunderland. You look at the blocking numbers. Would you have expected Florida to be out blocking Wisconsin 10 to 6? Uh, no, I would not have. But but again, after watching Florida play and, and just how how resilient and tough they've been, I again, I'm not surprised. It's just it's been fun, fun to watch them and, and watch this confidence that they have in themselves and one another. On the overpass, Caesar once again throwing that ball into the wide open area. Six set points for the Florida Gators. Recky down the line, McKissick hanging in, digging a scud. Fair haul again. The combination, what solid team play. Right around the dial, McKissick, Hall. Hail Caesar along with Lauren Forte. And for the first time this year, the number one seeded Wisconsin Badgers are going to go to a five set tiebreaker. The Gators tie it at two sets apiece. Is this a stunner possibly coming your way? The number eight seed Florida Gators have taken the top seeded Wisconsin Badgers right to the edge. We're going to play a fifth set tiebreaker. Florida has been superb. Fair Hall coming back, leading the way with 21 kills, and the stage is set. Two sets apiece. Wisconsin has not played a five-set match so far in the year. Florida two and one, including a five-set win over the number two seeded Kentucky Wildcats. Paul Sunderland with you in Southern California. Salima Rockwell out in Texas, and we can see it. We can feel the tension of this match from our respective home bases. Wisconsin, how do they bounce back? What does Wisconsin, Wisconsin fans have to look for? And does Florida really have the belief to close this out now in a tiebreaker? Well, I tell you, this has been such a fun match to watch. Both teams just battling on either side and stepping up in different ways at different times. And I think that's what you expect in this environment, in a championship environment, when they're battling to get to the semifinals. But right now, it's Molly Haggerty on the Wisconsin side yeah. that's really having a big match and, and showing that she wants the ball. We'll see maybe does she start in the left front. I'm not sure, but Dana Recchi as well. And of course, for Florida, it's been Thayer Hall. So it's going to be interesting to see where they start. This is a fast set, game the 15, and Thayer Hall coming up big time so far tonight. And as Holly Rowe told us, it wasn't always a time when Thayer Hall wanted to be a college volleyball player, a big time volleyball player. Well, she's come up big time for the eight seeded Gators. As we mentioned, 21 kills on 45 swings. And it bears repeating, neither she nor Tiara Caesar got off to a good start. But how tough are they mentally and emotionally to come all the way back and take Florida and push the number one seed right to the brink? 15 point tiebreaker. Each team will get an additional challenge. Lauren Barnes, who's been fabulous give you her numbers 24 kill dig so far on the match Caesar is down that ball was set tight she violated the center line and so Wisconsin on the board first again Wisconsin has not played a five set match so far on the year of course Wisconsin starting with Barnes serving Dana Recchi left front makes sense Couple of poor passes to start things out. Going off speed, Barnes there is again. 25 digs for Barnes, but missed out of bounds by Loberg. Loberg has struggled throughout the course of this match, usually very, very reliable. She's got eight kills, eight errors on 39 swings. That's a lot of attempts for a player who's having a tough match, hitting zero. Yeah, she's she's definitely struggling a little bit here trying to find find the court and just not make make errors keep the ball in play but they need her to pass they need her to handle the ball back to back unforced errors if you will the first was some pressure on her but that one just missed into the net you think we might see jade demps if wisconsin gets off to a slow start you know there's a there's a chance but again grace loberg they've counted on her passing wise molly haggerty hasn't been in there a lot lately passing she was in there earlier so they're going to need that ball control 
Well, poor ball control right now for Wisconsin. That ball bite of it out of bounds. Barnes again. Good cover by Carlton. Carlton, big swing, big block, nice touch by Wisconsin. Long momentum rally, three meter line violation, Thayer Hall just over the line. Back row player, you have to take off completely behind the three meter line, and that one was really close. It was close, but I like the dig to transition. She's screaming for it. Look at that. That left foot just hits the, the 10 foot line. Wasn't as close as I thought. Good work by the officials, tied at two. And Chavita misses that into the net. Salima, when you were coaching, how different was your approach to a tiebreaker, particularly when you were in it in a, in a match that was where the margin for error is so small? Well, really, it, it starts with the, the matchups and what we want to do and executing the game plan, right? When you press too much, you have to execute quickly and, and fast. Try to get a couple of points in a row. That's the goal. Stretch it just a little bit, two or three points, and you're in control. What a dig by McKissick. You know, they say in the Big Ten, we're going to make you touch it five times to score a point. McKissick, Ellie McKissick hanging in. That was an absolute bomb by Retke, and she just stood in and said, what else you got? She has done a fantastic Look job, it. and Retke knows that line is open around Caesar. Blocked by Caesar along with Forte on the outside. So now Florida doing it defensively, both in the front court and in the back court. It's a phase. It's a block and defense phase of the game. Forte with her seventh block, eight kills on 15 swings. Can Florida pull off a huge upset? We'll find out when we come back. Fifth set, Omaha, Nebraska. The 40th NCAA Volleyball Championship. I wouldn't say prohibitive, but a big favorite to make it to the national championship match for the second year in a row. The Wisconsin Badgers are up against it now. And the Florida Gators are giving them everything they want. Caesar again, tough swing from well off the net. We'll just keep that ball in play. Good read by Hall. Loberg over the top, kept alive. What defense by both of these teams. Retke again, too hot to handle in the cross court. Fantastic defense, defensive effort by Hall on the other side. But I tell you what, Retke finishes plays. She knows when it's tight, Sydney Hilly has that trust with her and the confidence that she's going to finish. Retke, if I look closely, I think she's in the right front. So Wisconsin has one more rotation with Retke in the front court. Forte smartly off the edge. Tell you what, that's a nice swing, but that, that huge block was in front of her. They didn't move. Had Recky and, and Hilly hanging out there, but a nice long arm swing off the top of the block. It's not often that a number one seed doesn't make it to the national semifinals. The last was the Southern California Trojans. They were the number one seed in 2015, got knocked out in the regional finals by Kansas. Kept alive by Forte and just out of bounds. That makes it 6-4. Again, each team with an additional challenge. Flor Florida still has two timeouts remaining. Wisconsin has already used one. Hall, Hall off the top and out of bounds. Both teams have a handful of challenges left. Not three challenges left. That could be a big factor. Thayer Hall again. 22 kills on 47 swings. Just being smart with the ball. Smart swings on the outside. The block knew where the ball was going based on the serve in the pass. Nice job by Hall. Chavito with a really good clutch pass. Ball on top of the net. Joust coming. Dooley wins her part of that. Going deep. 
Tracked down by Loberg. Caesar is roofed out of the back row. Hart along with Molly Haggerty. A huge rejection by Wisconsin. And that is a big play at the right time for Wisconsin. Knowing that she's available out of the back row, being in the right position. But Caesar knows she wants that ball again. Keep an eye on that. The two hitter rotations, there's no slide available. So there's also back row attack that they can utilize. Dug by who else? Barnes. Transition. Robinson off the edge. Quick back to back points for Wisconsin. They trail by only one. Well, it's nice getting Robinson the ball. She's been pretty quiet here in the last couple of sets. Excellent transition play there and a nice tool off the edge of the block there. Hall diving into that cross court. Barnes now with 27 digs. Hall. What a hammer off the edge of the block that time, using the edge of Devin Robinson. Feel that energy and that fire as people are coming in the game. She's trying to take this team on her back and carry them over the finish line. And speaking of carrying her heavy shoulders, nine kills in the fourth set to get she and Montserrat and the rest of her teammates over the line already, too, here in the fifth. Two-point advantage once again. Haggerty inside, dug by McKissick. Right side, Robinson, and the freshman sprays it out of bounds. It's a tough miss, and you look at Barnes kind of pumping her up a little bit. She's like, you got it, good swing. Trying to keep that freshman in a good place right now. They know they need her down the stretch here. Three hitter rotation. Robinson on the right, back to Haggerty. I kind of expected that. Haggerty again, taking all the big swings and coming through for the Badgers. A huge swing, and she is just so business. She takes care of her job, gets it done, gets a big kill at a clutch moment, runs back ready to serve. Haggerty now with 17 kills on 45 swings. Florida try to make some hay with Retke for rotation on the on the sideline. Loberg smartly off the edge, change of pace. I love that shot by by Loberg. Right now, she knows that she needs to keep the ball in play, be smart with her swings. Hasn't been super effective right now for Wisconsin, but she can make big plays when it counts. Haggerty to the back row now. Thayer Hall is stuffed, and we're tied. Hart along with Robinson. I tell you, I like that Robinson takes this line. She's been getting tooled down the line and off the edge of the block. And you see her get outside. Wow, a nice reach, reading that, knowing where Thayer Hall is going reaching outside of her body, pressing back into the court. Timeout called by Florida. Back and forth we go. The number one seed, Wisconsin Badgers, only played 15 matches so far on the year. They played a, a spring season, some of it shortened by several cancellations. Did not play Penn State, did not play Nebraska, only played Minnesota once and have gone through a period since February 21st where they've played a grand total, including the tournament of five matches. You think that's been a factor at all? No, I, I, I definitely think that's a factor. I mean, when it's February 21st and you've got three matches before you come in, I mean, that's forever in the month of March and April. That is a, a lifetime. And so it takes you a while to kind of get back in that rhythm, find it together as a team and, and come back from so much time out off. But this, this Badger team can absolutely do that. They have the ability, they have the leadership in Haggerty and Recce to get it done. See Haggerty with the final word. Still one more match still to come. Number two seed, we've been watching the number one seed for about two and a half hours here. They're the Purdue Boilermakers, a really improved team from last year. They've got weapons, they've got the Libero of the year in the Big Ten, Jenna Otek, outstanding setting, and the Kentucky Wildcats are as solid as any team right now in the country is evidenced by their number two seed. They have just got talent right around the dial. 
Stumler, the Skinner sisters, and they've got an absolutely magnificent setter as well in Madison Lilly. Tied at nine. Overpass, Robinson, look at McKissick hanging in. And Thayer Hall missed that out of bounds. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. Well, Paul, you talk about leadership. It was Molly Haggerty in that last huddle that said, right now, we do this. They have such belief in her. She has such belief in herself, and it's just fitting that it's her back there right now serving in this moment. She is their trusted leader. Nobody they'd rather have. Haggerty has, thank you, Holly. Haggerty has been tremendous, really clutch, taking a lot of tough swings. Off speed, deflected. Loberg is rejected. Mia Sokolowski, who hadn't played at all throughout the tournament, comes in. Nine and number 99. They are rolling three nines to stuff that. Wow. A huge response to end a 4 nothing run. Right side again to Hart and missed it out of bounds. Yeah, there's a touch right in front of the referee. Everybody knew it. Ball's out of bounds, and Danielle Hart will breathe a sigh of relief and head back to the service line. That means that Dana Retke is coming back on. There's number 16. Everybody knows. That was really good. That, that was really good response by Wisconsin to make a move with Retke on the sideline. Well, that's what you want to do. You want to score as many points as you can when she's over there. And I tell you, Wisconsin did a really nice job hanging in there. Tough chance for Montserrat out of the middle to Dana Retke on the sideline. A couple of big plays here for Wisconsin. Barnes scooping this ball up. And of course, you know where this ball is going. Retke coming through again. Barnes will go back to serve. Wisconsin now with a 12-10 advantage. What a match. And the ball falls again. Caesar going off speed, 12-11. And a tough off speed shot. That ball just kind of dribbled down the back of the blockers. That's one of the hardest balls to play defensively because you don't know if you want to turn around and play it or who's behind you on defense. Boy, the pressure has gotten to both of these teams, neither of them. Wisconsin's hitting 33, and uh, Florida's hitting negative in this fifth set. 12-11. Haggerty, good pass. And through the block and down for Dana Recchi. Saying this is a tough matchup right now. Dana Recchi hitting that slide around Caesar. A heavy diet, heavy dose of Dana Recchi in crunch time. Javita back to serve. Wisconsin two points away. Javita with the dig, but really tough chance, almost impossible chance. And Forte again, what a match. 10 kills on 17 swings, no errors, hitting almost 600 for number 24. Florida back within one. Loberg has struggled, but coming through in the clutch, Salima. Nice swing by Grace Loberg. I tell you what, she is a fantastic player, and sometimes matches just aren't going exactly as you want them, certainly offensively, and doing everything else well. And like you said, coming through right now in the end. Two match points for the top seeds, the Wisconsin Badgers. Still to come, Purdue and Kentucky. Washington came back from two sets down to outlast Pittsburgh. They're in their fifth. Uh, national semifinals in Texas over Nebraska. Tremendous performances by Logan Eggleston, Breon Butler, and Skylar Fields. And Texas will be going back to the national semifinals for the 13th time. Wisconsin looking to survive in advance and get there for the fourth time. Tell you what, what a championship this has been already. Some unbelievable matches, and this is exactly what the fans hope for, are looking for. 
both on the Florida side and Wisconsin. It's just a battle that you would hope that you would see to get to the national semifinal match. Well, but Salima facing two match points. What's going on in the Florida huddle? Well, right now, Mary is giving them confidence. That's what she's doing right now. She's instilling in them that they can do this. They have the ability to side out right away. She knows they can do it. She's seen this team be resilient, and now they're just trying to fire one another up and get it done. They can handle this ball, pass the ball, get the ball to Forte. I mean, run the middle, side it out. There's no question in my mind, Salima, that Florida has played their best match of the year and maybe their toughest mentally and emotionally. We're going to find out in a couple of minutes whether or not it's enough against the number one seeds. Match point number one for Dana Retke in Wisconsin. Keep an eye on Fair Hall on that right side of the court as well, hitting that D-ball. And Molly Haggerty is back in the front court, ready to take a tough swing. Caesar is roofed. Unbelievable finish. So fitting that Dana Recchi there for the stuff block to win the set and the match. What a performance by both of these teams. Florida withstood losing the opening set 30 to 28 came back tied the match at two sets apiece Thayer Hall Tiara Caesar Lauren Forte Monterey was superb but the number one seeds the champions of the Big Ten Wisconsin Badgers they got Dana Redke back in the front row right on time and speaking of toughness how tough was Molly Haggerty and Kelly Sheffield told us this afternoon that this is the kind of match where she really shows up and she was the one as Holly Roll told us in that huddle just a tremendous contest and I think a sigh of relief right around the board and the coaching staff with Kelly Sheffield I mean I tell you it was an unbelievable performance and like you said Molly Haggerty really rallying her team doing everything she's in there all six rotations serving tough passing getting it done on the court for her team but just keeping her composure that's what i love the most about melly haggerty doesn't get rattled just keeps going molly haggerty led the way with 17 kills after that it was dana retke with a huge stuff at the end and she's standing by with our holly row well dana it has just been an insane match there you guys haven't been in a five-step match all year what was it like in those final moments pulling together to get this win i <laughs> I'm a little speechless right now. I mean, this team just came together when we needed it most. And I mean, I think we were down four points there in that set and we just came back and just pushed and pushed and pushed and um, we got the job done. And I know there's a lot of doubt with us right now, but I think we really showed up in those big moments and we put the ball down. So I like it. I'm like shaking. I am just so happy for my team and how much heart and passion they put into this game. It was just unbelievable. You had that great block at the end. Caesar had been unbelievable all match. What did you see when you went up and eliminated that moment? Yeah, um, she's an absolutely great player. Really, really respect her. Um, just doing what middles do. Get your hands over the net and um, press really hard. So I knew she was kind of coming cross all game. So I wanted to get my hands into that space and it, it turned out in our favor. I don't think people appreciate how bizarre this season has been. You, this is just the sixth match you guys have played in since February 21st. How are you finding your rhythm and your timing at the biggest stage in the biggest moment? It's just trusting each other and our teammates. I mean, we trust our, co our coaching staff to come out here and give us, you know, the best report. And uh, we just got to trust our teammates, people next to us. And that's just really been the key to all of this. We've had a lot of breaks, a lot of ups and downs. And um, just coming together in those key moments, just got to trust each other. And that's exactly what we did tonight. Well, you fought through. We'll see you in the national semifinals, Dana. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Holly. Dana Retke, 16 kills, five blocks, and none bigger than this one, Salima. Oh, it was the biggest move, and look at Dana Retke getting over the net, pressing into that area of the court, like she said, taking away that space, and the joy, the celebration, and the, the almost disbelief. So happy on that finish.
Well, the bracket is starting to fill out. There's only one spot remaining, and we'll have that match for you. Coming up next, number seven, Purdue, and number two, Kentucky. Wisconsin will take on the number four seed, Texas Longhorns, a winner earlier today over Nebraska. What a match, and congratulations to Florida. Talking about Hart, they came back. They forced a fifth set tiebreaker, but it was not enough against the country's number one seeded Wisconsin Badgers who will move on. Coverage of the NCAA Volleyball Regional Finals continues in about 45 minutes on ESPNU between Purdue and Kentucky. Thanks for joining us for now, and we'll see you later. Coming back with the studio with Sam and Katie to talk about this incredible contest. <laughs>